right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It is the 16th day of January 2013. Uh, we have been uh, watching and taking notes. It's exactly what we thought. 23 devastating attacks with executive actions and executive orders on the Second Amendment. Uh, doctors are going to spy on people and report the, to the CPS if you own guns in the home, even though they're not illegal. Uh, they are to harass gun owners. They are to SWAT team gun owners' homes. Uh, if you sell a gun to any friends or family, they're going to claim that's a felony. They're going to try to make you retroactively prove the providence of your guns. They are going to try to put taxes on ammo. They're going to massively expand the uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms uh, so they can ship more guns into Mexico to kill more people in false flags so they can blame the Second Amendment. Uh, he's rattling this all off while pimping out poor little children that he's exploiting up there on the stage, knowing the federal government made the schools gun-free zones. And then the media hyped, hey, an option for crazies on Prozac or other drugs who play shoot 'em up games all day, go to the school and kill people. And they're trying to put, collectively, the guilt of dead kids on us for our Second Amendment. Because they want us to live like folks do in Chicago and New York with the highest crime rates in the world. Because the victims have been disarmed with thug cops everywhere, feeding on people along with thugs in the streets. Meanwhile, good cops all over the U.S. in cities and towns are saying, we're not going to enforce this. Guns make us safer. They want us to be like they are in other areas like Chicago and L.A. where everybody lives in fear. And there's like in Oakland, big shoot 'em ups every night. Because they're a mafia. Let's go back to this thug exploiting these children when he swore to never go after our guns. Here it is. We can change as if the American people demand it. He wants to rally everybody. And by the way, that doesn't just mean from certain parts of the country. They're organizing on a jihad after We're our guns. We're need voices in those areas, in those congressional districts where the tradition of gun ownership is strong. The fight is on, to folks. Speak up. If they can take the and guns, they can take everything. Important. They're going to take the pension funds. It can't just be. They're going to the totally usual bankrupt us. That's why they're militarizing the police, armored vehicles, billions we have of to bullets. We examine ourselves and our hearts. Yeah, examine your heart. Ask ourselves. Just because you got a peace prize and you're supposedly half black doesn't mean you get to be a dictator. This will not happen. All the stupid the trendies American think it's demand. so cute. Yeah, and you know what? They put themselves in the moral high ground position, teachers, knowing there's going to be more mass and shootings. Pastors, and if they have to, they'll stage them. Like Larry Pratt said. Responsible gun owners, if Americans of every if background they'd stage fast and furious, they'd enough. stage this. They'd stage Aurora. So too much pain and care too much about our children to allow this to continue. Then change will, change will come. Look at Biden. That's what it's going to take. You know, in the letter that uh, Julia wrote me, she said, I know that laws have to be passed by Congress. But I beg you to try very hard. <laughs> Julia, I will try very hard. Folks, this is so sick. He's now, oh, She's right. looking at the little children. Now the children are going to tell us, turn our guns in. The government they need to bring these proposals up for a vote. Goes and says the kids the say do this. We need to make sure that they do. Unbelievable. The president rallying right. to overturn the Second Amendment. As and using Congress, five and six-year-old children. Universal background checks to keep guns out of the wrong Fade that down. Ask them if they support. That's killing private transfer, or giving guns as gifts, which they know. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this government shipped guns into Mexico to cause carnage. The, the CBS News got the memos to blame the Second Amendment. They killed thousands over there, hundreds over here, including five police officers, three of them Border Patrol, conservatively. They are so cold-blooded. And these sweet little kids up there he's using... Again, this is what Al Gore said a few years ago. He went to public schools and said, you heard the audio. You tell your parents, pay carbon taxes. You tell them, you know best. Every authoritarian society goes to the kids and says, you tell your parents what to do. This is outrageous. And so they handpick kids' letters that have been mailed in, Million Mom March kids and other people, and then they sit there and display them and go, I'm going to get the guns for you, little kid, and now you're against the little kids. If you don't take the guns. I mean, this is so transparent. But this is a guy that lied to everybody and said, I will not raise taxes unless you make a quarter million a year. And he raised it on people making 30000 a year. And even lower in some actuaries. Obama phone lady got her latest paycheck. And they took even more out. Everybody in my office gets more taken out now. And that's just the beginning. It's all these lies. It's like being informed is like torturous.
Let's go back. Let's go back right now, back to the uh, would-be dictator, who, again, is saying Congress needs to do this, but I do right have... to worship freely and safely. That right was denied to Sikhs in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. The right to assemble peacefully. That oh, right see, now, was denied now he's saying the Second Amendment is attacking Oregon, all our other rights. No, Aurora, the Colorado. drug war has created a thug culture. The giant prisons are colleges rights, of crime, right, liberty, and we've got pursuit, guns that are holding your crime wave back. Fade him down. That we're denied. We are holding your crime wave back, and you hate the fact that crime using guns in the last 16, 17 years has dropped 49%. And that overall violent crimes dropped 21%, FBI.gov. Real local numbers compiled and filed. You hate that concealed carry is pushing back your urban crime wave. You hate the fact that people in big cities illegally have guns to protect themselves. You hate it. You want total control to do to us whatever you want, you gangster thug. And that's why I've written a citizen's move. And, 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 and people you know, ask me, well, 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 how are you saying citizen? It was like citizen arrest. I filed articles of impeachment publicly at prisonplanet.com and infowars.com that I wrote last night in consultation with Paul Watson and Aaron Dykes where I lay out where congressmen and others have shown we're in the Constitution, Obama is done impeachable offenses clearly on their face, saying the U.N. runs our military and Congress isn't over war now, saying you can shut down coal power plants without a law, telling Congress fly a kite, saying he can launch Libya and Syria attacks and telling Congress to go to hell, uh, saying he's going to have orders to restrict guns outside of law, running fast and furious, caught lying about that. It's all listed there, and that's meant now to get that passed around. It's kind of like when a state passes a law, and then other states pick up the law, and even if that state doesn't pass it, the law being written may be adopted by others. I've just put out a basic template to everybody, and God bless DrudgeReport.com last night for linking to it and getting it up there. InfoWars is getting its record all-time 15-year traffic right now. That InfoWars 15 years, but on air 17. Record since 1997 record traffic right now and the site is up and down and I'm, I'm trying to hire more IT folks to help the guys I got they're like Scotty in the engine room and we're hiring consultants you name it but I mean it's just sustained set of a million visitors between the sites every day that we normally get it's like two three million a day and uh, so we're trying to keep it up but 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 my citizens petition citizen files petition to impeach Obama citizen files let me give you the exact um, Exact uh, headline uh, here. It was up on Drudge Report. It was up there since last night. It may have been taken down. The only place I could go find my own headline is on there because my site uh, had um, had gone down. Uh, the point is, is that it's up on Infowars.com, and it is it is right there. Citizens citizens file articles of impeachment against Obama. We can actually put that up on screen for everybody, and it 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 goes through it all right there, ladies and gentlemen. The government is massing armaments against us, illegally spying on us, buying billions of bullets, launching drones in the air, training kids to spy on their parents, turning the entire system on its head, going down a list of tyrannical actions and just checking them off, training the police and military for gun confiscation in official army manuals. In fact, we need to add that as articles of impeachment. Since 2010, Obama has directed... The Secretary of Defense to, to add this training for domestic operations. Here he is shaking hands with the poor little kids. Let's put it back up there. Those poor little victims. Take the guns or you don't support these kids. Totally disgusting. We've got it all recorded. We're going to be playing clips of this throughout the broadcast. But citizens file articles of impeachment against Obama. Uh, it is up on Infowars.com. And again, if the site is down for you, you can simply type in citizens file articles of impeachment against Obama, and it's signed by Alex Jones. Just like I can go in and swear out an affidavit that I saw my neighbor burying somebody in their backyard. Just like I can go swear out an affidavit that I saw uh, my neighbor uh, dumping poison in the well. Just like I can, you can swear out an affidavit that, yes, you saw this guy run out of the liquor store with a bag of money in his hand. Well, I've seen treason, I've studied the Bill of Rights and Constitution, and I've gone and seen what the constitutional lawyers are saying, and members of Congress, this is all impeachable. He's already done a bunch of impeachable stuff. And we're always like, if you do more, we're going to start impeachment. If you do more, and they tell people in Congress, you want your airplane to blow up, you want your car to run off the road, because these are gangsters. Well, you know what? I'm here. 
You know what? They kill me. That's the way it is. I'm like my forebears. I cannot be a slave. I know tyrants when I see it, and I am not going to. Let me tell you this. You either leave the country, and it's a global government. They're taking over everywhere. The same corporate fraud, the same corporate fascism, using socialism to indenture us, to enslave us, to domesticate us. You either leave the country or you fight back. Because let me tell you something, they are going to drop the hammer. Folks, they've signed us on to $1,500 trillion. The Chinese government, communists, that have... Su Folks, type in Bloomberg. I want to show them a photo of it. Suicide nets at Apple factories. The 20-story the, the, the factories where they drug them and they do forced abortions. So all they do, in, in by the hundreds, we're, we're, we're jumping off to commit suicide. So they put nets... There. One person jumps, everybody copycats and goes up to jump because they're there. They're drugged. They're made to work 18 hours a day. They put help me notes in the packages inside Apple's Foxcom factories. That Al Gore's on the board. He's the one that demands they have the worst pay in China. Slave labor. Suicide nets installed at the dorms. Okay, they live in 100 square foot cubicles, just like Bloomberg wants to set up. This is a plan. The globalists made a deal with China in the 70s to let to have the lowest standard in the world to leverage out the United States and to buy our debt. The globalists are clients with the Chinese government against the American people, against their own people. And the Chinese government came out three weeks ago and said, we own your debt. Take the guns. That's an order. That is a U.N. order through the Chinese I mean, they, they said, you will take the guns, we own your debt. And Obama is hell-bent to get them. Of course they sent mercenaries in there to do that. It's the oldest trick in the book. Same thing with Colorado, has all the signs. You send in the shooters, have the mental patient saying, I don't know who I am, drugged up in the parking lot. Or you shoot the drug head in the back of the head and your guys get out. Let's settle down here and be as calm as I can about all of this. But you have to understand something. They have passed laws, what, five years ago, where they can basically take private pension funds. They haven't started the full move to get them. They've done some tests. Uh, they're talking about taking federal pension funds. You notice in Europe this is happening. Uh, you notice that they got massive tax increases through, including on the poorest uh, working Americans. Fourteen different taxes uh, in the uh, last raft of legislation that they rammed through in the fake financial cliff. Now they're back saying, oh, we're in debt again. Uh, Bernanke, the real head of this country, the head of the private Federal Reserve, said yesterday, let's just get rid of a debt ceiling entirely. They've decided to go Weimar Republic. They've decided to go Zimbabwe. And do you know what that means? It means hyperinflation. But stag hyperinflation because you're not going to have jobs on top of things increasing in price. And you're going to go from 25 million to 50 million on food stamps. We've now crossed that Rubicon to 100 million. And crime is just going to explode. But see, these big city mafia types, they know what they do. They shut things off, get people dependent, ship in the drugs. Government ships in most of the drugs. That's on record. Congressional hearings, 1997, Solicitor General of the CIA. It's on record. Everybody knows that. They destabilize the society. The working people, the middle class, get scared and say, take whatever rights you want, just keep me safe from the street thugs. And they know exactly what they're doing. The problem is you've had gun ownership in all 50 states go off the chart in the last 20 years, roughly. Gun ownership has exploded. The gun culture has exploded. And so you've seen a 49%. I did a report on this last week. I'm going to do another one uh, today or tomorrow with the FBI.gov numbers. Because, you know, I kept showing violent crime down 21% in the last 15, 16 years. 11 points of that in the last, uh, what, since 2007, last six years roughly. So it's accelerating the drop in overall violent crime. Muggings, stabbings, beatings, shootings. And then I was there watching Fox News, and they were at FBI.gov, and they showed v crime with guns down a whopping 49%. You can go to FBI.gov. I know the media is listening. Go look it up. Fox News had it on. I got my iPad, typed it in, went and found it. People were saying to me, Alex, it's, it's higher crime rate drop than what you said. Why are you putting out this info? I was going off one statistic. 49. 
they cannot stand that, folks, that you're in charge, that you've got a gun, that criminals are scared, that every day there's a new 911 tape in the news. But it's always just local, never national, where the, the woman's on 911 going, don't come in. He, okay, he's busted down the front door. I'm going in the bathroom. 911's like, yes, yes, don't engage him. Go in the bathroom and hide. Uh, he's, he's busting down this door. His arm's coming through a hole. He opened it. I'm going to shoot him. Boom, 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 boom. Dead. Or the guy crawls out and dies on the street. Or crawls out and is bleeding and the cops come and get him. That's what we're talking about. You see it constantly because of sites like Infowars.com and WorldNetDaily.com and DrudgeReport.com that break the establishment media blockade. ABC, NBC, CBS, they will never, ever, 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 ever show you that information. 49 I didn't even know that. I mean, I was, I'd was i heard the numbers and seen them over the years, a 20-plus percent reduction in violent crime within three years after a concealed carry went in in Florida. Same number in Texas. But I guess it's been compounding now over the last decade or more. 49. I was sitting there, and I go, that can't be true. 49. That's almost a 50% cut in crimes using guns. And this criminal is up there on TV using kids. And, and let me tell you, I had him faded down. It's a good thing when it was live. During the break, they were queuing it up back there. We're going to get it ready for you. It's in high def off the TV. we got to break it down to play it here on the radio and stream it on the web. Point is, we can't just instantly convert that high def. We should set up where we can instantly play high def out here once it's been taped. But whatever. The point is, you saw it. He high-fived the kids with a big, stinking smile. And Biden could hardly stop smiling. He was trying to have a serious look. And, and I want to do a piece on that. Alert to the real media out there. Biden, a bunch, was going, especially when he was first introducing Obama, he was trying not to smile. He was going... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get that guns, baby. Oh, yeah, I'm a gangster. I mean, Biden is a gangster. He is a thug, and so is Obama. They're a bunch of slick thugs. Let me tell you something. Your Chicago, New York gangster crap doesn't fly in Texas. You got that scum? Settle down here as best I can. I want to open the phones up so you can respond to this. David Knight's got the transcript, one of our reporters in there, of Obama and Biden's speech. You notice of the 23 executive actions and executive orders, They didn't give any particulars. Well, here's the deal. If you go watch the two-hour-long C-SPAN last week of Rahm Emanuel and others uh, at that uh, socialist uh, think tank, we posted the whole video on Infowars.com a few days ago. They lay out the whole plan. He says, we're just going to let police take the guns. We're going to just target gun owners and claim they have the guns illegally. We're going to shut down the gun manufacturers. We're going to lean on the gun sellers. We're going to use mafia tactics. That's what he's saying. And again, they're going to uh, deputize the medical tyranny, the same people that are already giving kids shots without parental consent, to basically call in endangerment orders when they call your kid aside and ask them about guns. They had to pass a law in the health care bill that uh, conservatives put in there to where it made it illegal for them to do that. But Obama doesn't care. He says, I'm telling doctors you do this. It was doctors that put that guy, Lanza and Holmes, on all those psychotropic drugs. And Harris and Kleibold, and the list goes on and on. And nothing was said about drugs in that speech. I, I, I've got the transcript. I didn't watch the whole thing as I was talking over it. But uh, correct? That's what... I, I, I mean, that is just... That is, yeah, yeah, let me have that transcript. I forgot and left it out there. Thank you. I mean, that is just amazing. By the way, uh, DrudgeReport.com... Uh, it has all the latest stuff on this. So does Infowars.com. The problem is Infowars is up and down uh, because of the incredible traffic. Kurt thought it was a denial of service attack. They looked at the traffic. No, it's all-time record traffic, which I'm not happy about. I would, if we turn this country around, I would literally have a show about science and a show about literature and movies and about camping and stuff. I would have a once-a-week, three-hour radio, TV show, variety show. I mean, I'd have, like, magicians on and stuff. I would have an interesting, you know, it'd be like a Johnny Carson show, okay? I don't like having to do this, but I am completely possessed 
with resistance to tyranny. I am, I am, I am completely animated. I cannot control myself. I can hardly sleep because I know we're dealing with criminal tyrants. DrudgeReport.com, there it is. Citizens file articles of impeachment against Obama. And then you go to InfoWars.com, and it is right there. And again, I wrote this. I wrote articles of impeachment a year ago that didn't get any attention. I wrote this with Paul Watson over the telephone last night because he can type better than I can. Uh, I'm, I'm, it would take me five hours if I typed it myself because I just make mistakes and go back and use a spell checker. So we wrote this in about two hours together on the phone, but I think I probably need to get Watson on the phone during a break and just add, so people understand, the, the original Declaration of Independence started as citizens' petitions called Bill of Particulars in all of the uh, 13 colonies circulated listing the crimes that government was committing against the free rights of an Englishman that they'd fought in 12-15 uh, uh, to get, and then again with the Parliament Act. Most of the Parliament supported our secession. Until the King of England basically threatened to arrest a bunch of them. And King George III rode to Parliament and addressed Parliament that was unheard of. And said, your duty as Englishmen is to get in there and take down these rebels. And uh, they, they, again, threatened to arrest more people if they didn't get in line. So the king bullied. They would have kept the colonies. We'd still be part of England, folks. If they, but, but like, hey, I'm a British citizen. My ancestors fought for the right to, for me to have guns and swords and cannons, and I need these to protect myself from the French and the Spanish and the Indians. They were all fighting each other. They were all teaming up together at different times. I mean, it was, it was amazing. There'd be, there were wars where you'd have 10,000 people get killed. I mean, I, I mean, there were just, the Westerns all advertise everything that happened, uh, you know, from the 1860s on with the Comanche and the Apaches. That, that was nothing. There were wars. Uh, with, you know, weird rebel settler groups, like something out of Conan the Barbarian. Uh, and, you know, 20,000 Indians with groups of whites and escaped slaves, you know, in Andrew Jackson's time uh, and before that would come pouring down out of the Illinois Territory and just huge wars and whole towns and cities burned and tens of thousands dead. No one even knows this history. I mean, it was just Conan the Barbarian. They never make movies out of any of that because that's not what they wanted to popularize because the real history is so incredible. My point is nobody was good in that. Everybody was barbarous. Everybody was making side deals. This Indian tribe coming and saying, English, help me take out these guys with the French and I'll help you. Divide and conquer the whole nine yards. And the, and the Redcoats came and said, we're coming to confiscate your guns. And... Another thing is the Englishmen didn't like the militarized police and the checkpoints and their wives being, you know, uh, searched physically. And so they would go and beat up redcoats and redcoats would come and shoot the uh, brigands, as they called them. And then the men would go ahead and shoot back. And then the redcoats said, that's it. People are starting to shoot back. We're coming to take your guns. Line up and turn them in. And about half the population turned their guns in. But if they were Tories, pro-king, you can keep your gun. In fact, you're now in the king's militia. Go and kill whoever you want. And it was the abuses, and it was the outrages, and it was the, it was the king's militias abusing and raping and burning and stealing and shaking people down that turned the colonies against the king and the redcoats. This went on for 15 years, roughly. Imagine you're taking apples to town for sale and you come up and there is a government auxiliary SWAT team aiming a cannon at you out of the back of the wagon and they got guns aimed at you and they say, get out. And they come and they steal your apples and they reach into your purse, your wallet, and take your money. And you're like, I've got to have that to buy seeds for next year. That's, that's everything I've worked for for a year. And they're just like, oh, stand him up. Break his jaw. And if you complained about it, they'd take your wife and kids and they'd put them in stocks till they died. A torture apparatus with your head and arms in it. You know how Andrew Jackson, Andrew Jack, you know how his mother and brother died? In a concentration camp. So he joined the rebellion when he was 11 years old and ran messages. And he wouldn't brag about it, so the history is 100% nailed down, but also snipered British soldiers. He was 11, 12, 13, 14 years old. 
Okay, that's where our country came from, ladies and gentlemen. That's what our country was born out of. People's mothers tied up in a concentration camp to die. Okay, and that's, that's where every government ends up going. In Russia, in Germany, in China, in Cuba, in, in England has had these wars over and over again. The reason the British are so polite is that it goes back to the age of chivalry in the 15th, 16th, 17th century. If you were rude to someone, and it all came out of the Enlightenment and people becoming free, it was, I don't care who you are, you insult me, you be a lord, you be anybody, you're going to get in a fight with me, I'm going to call you out, and no one's going to associate with you ever again if you don't pull your sword or walk your 20 paces, and we're going to fight to the death right now. Okay, you just insulted me. You just acted like a tough gangbanger. Get out in the street. Somebody's going to die right now. An armed society is a polite society. And if you're watching me on TV today, if you're watching the radio streams on TV right now, you notice I'm wearing my camouflage duck hunting jacket. And, of course, in a real urban warfare situation, camouflage would be a sports jacket, suit, and tie. All right? With a collapsible rifle in the small of my back. I am not an offensive military person, even though I have the basic skills of a rifleman, passed on since the founding of this country and before. But the point... It, the reason I'm wearing camouflage and the new T-shirt that we're selling that, by the way, has blown away any shirt we've ever sold. It's an AK-47 says, come and take it. What my ancestor said at Gonzales, Texas, you come and take it. You want to take our guns, Santa Ana? You come and take them. That was only 50 years or less after the Revolutionary War. And it says inside the AK-47, the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Boom. That is the all-time bestseller, and you support our info war. It's a war bond. It's got Infowars.com on the back. Wear your colors proud. Meet like-minded patriots. And let me tell you, the reason I'm so focused, the reason I'm so angry, is also I am risking my life, my treasure, my name, to be out front and say, let's have the second American Revolution, have the states secede, pull out, re-upload the republic, which is in the Declaration of Independence. It's not our right, it's our duty to absolve a government and then create a new one. Well, we, we want our republic back. So you're not real. You're globalist sympathizers. You're Vichy French to the Nazis. Get out. We re-upload the republic. And I've had top constitutional lawyers that advise Congress, that advise Ron Paul, you know, Harvard lawyers on. They agree with my analysis, okay? Because it's not my analysis. It's 1776. It's Declaration of Independence. It's July 4th. It's everything. But I got to tell you, it's inbred. All these Texans that you see, uh, like Stockton and, and Toth and, and all the rest of them, I've gone and looked into these people. They've all been five, six, seven, eight generation Texans who were the very front line of the most radical, violent, but smart and aggressive, uh, adventurous Americans in frontier expansion. And some of the most vicious ongoing wars went on here. Indian wars, you name it. And so it's not a macho thing that Texans are saying. And notice it's Texans saying, hey, it isn't happening. It's that it's genetic. I don't care if you're black, white, Hispanic, who you are. If you're a Texan and your ancestors go back, you are hot-blooded and you're ready because your ancestors were willing to be in the violent frontier. You know, Pancho Villa, there was a long civil war in the north of Mexico. The Mexican government tried to take their guns. And what was it, a 10-year civil war? Killed hundreds of thousands of people, it's estimated. It was incredible. Because up in the north of Mexico was just as wild as Texas. People are like, you're going to take my gun when there's wolves and coyotes and bandits and everybody? You're not taking my gun? And the central government said, we are going to take your guns. There was a civil war in Mexico, a couple of them. You know what? They didn't win. Mexico didn't win against Guatemala, and they had guns. That's why Guatemala is Guatemala. The point is, everybody wants their guns. Because, it, it, folks, it's bold that he's going after the guns. And he wants the moral high ground. They're going to stage something else. White House ready. 23 executive actions developing. 
press doctors to ask patients about guns at home, health care providers to offer gun safety tips, counselors in schools. It'll be a big de gun demonization thing where kids say bang, bang with their fingers, have a Nerf gun. They shut down whole, you know, blocks and arrest the kid. I mean, you know. At least $4.5 billion in new spending to demonize and prosecute and harass gun owners and hold us up like we're child molesters, which is what the Attorney General said they'd do. Ignores violent movies, video games. Pro-gun senator vows to push new gun laws. See, there's all these disgusting defections. White House releases letters from pleading children and then high-fives them. They couldn't help but smile. Hospitals to stop delivering babies because of Obamacare. Man, that's incredible. Look at this. NRA plans fight of the century. Citizens file articles of impeachment against Obama. Again, that's top right-hand side of DrudgeReport.com. Easiest way to find it. Get it. And, and again, I'm going to call Watson during a break. <clears throat> and I'm going to uh, basically add the point at the top so that laymen out there don't understand that I've had constitutional lawyers on that agree with this premise, you've got to first put out what's impeachable, and then we link to proof and lawyers and news articles admitting it's, it's impeachable. I mean, him becoming the head of the U.N. Security Council, which they admitted on the news, violated Article 1, Section 9 of the Constitution, you know, to serve a foreign power or to, have, or to hold another office at the same time of government, totally illegal. I mean, it's, it, it's a felony. Article 1, Section 9, boom, got you right there. Boom, got you right there. I mean, we got you over and over again. It'd be like a cop driving by and seeing somebody cooking methamphetamine in their front yard in a bathtub. And you can smell it. You walk up. Is that methamphetamine? Yeah, it's methamphetamine. Boom, you're going to jail. I mean, it, it, it's an absolute red-handed. It, it, it'd be like catching um, Jerry Sandusky in the showers raping a kid. Of course, he didn't get in trouble because it was a giant pedophile command base. But the point is, that's what it's like. I mean, I mean, it is in the act. It is caught in the act. Like it caught in the bank with the gun saying, give me the money. And an off-duty cop pulls a gun or a concealed carry person and says, hands up. And you got, you got security cameras. You got witnesses. You got everybody saw it for God and country. You were in there saying, give me the money or I'm going to shoot you. Boom, you're going to prison. There's, there's, there's no doubting it. Okay. All we've got to do is, see, this is what dictators do. Hitler did it. Others have done it. Lenin didn't grab all the power right away. They slowly get away with whatever they want. They slowly do whatever they want. And listen, even in East Germany, one of the greatest police states ever, they had all these great rights and liberties in their constitution. Just no one followed them. And it took citizens not complying, saying no, criticizing the system, whisper campaigns, supporting good police, going against bad police. Until it finally just collapsed. I'm going to take a few phone calls in this segment and the next. Then we're going to get uh, Pastor Manning on with his take on this. You know, he prayed for me when I was in New York. And he prayed when we were getting stocked by Bloomberg thugs. And, uh, and, and I want to get his take on all this. Because he said, you watch Obama's going to try to become a dictator. And I was naive four years ago. I knew he was bad. But I didn't think they'd move this quick. And then we're going to have uh, Representative uh, Stephen Toth, or Toth as he pronounces it, on who I just saw on, um, and that 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 is somebody who's being Congress. He's state rep. I just saw him uh, on Wolf Blitzer when I was in the coffee room uh, for about two minutes, and I mean he was well spoken, had incredible demeanor, looked super sharp. That is what we need. And he explained, look, I, I don't care if you pass laws in Congress saying you can take the guns. It would take an amendment, and even that would be unconstitutional because it only points out on a right that already exists. We're not going to put up with this. And Texas is going to nullify this. And Wolf Blitzer's like, you can't do that. Oh, really? How come all these states then let the illegal aliens be, be uh, not arrested? Oh, he knows what he's talking about. And I, I haven't talked to him yet, but it sounds like he's a listener. So, again, that's what I'm doing here. Let me tell you the real power of this broadcast, by the grace of God. For all my problems, I am a real person who loves liberty and is willing to die for it if it takes that. And I'm on the line here, and, and the info I'm putting out more and more is getting to other people, and that's exactly what's happening right now, thanks to DrudgeReport.com. Citizens file articles of impeachment against Obama. And I need to r write a first line in there that I'm going to add just explaining. This is how our original Declaration of Independence started. They were bill of particulars passed around showing the usurpations and crimes. This can now be picked up by Congress or added to.
If well, the globalists have really uh, gambled. Child was mentioned 49 times, and drugs were mentioned zero times. When the drugs are the main cause, the main the main cause, guaranteed on record. Uh, and Representative Steve Stockman, if Obama violates Constitution, a lot of people will call for his impeachment. Uh, NRA ad, we're going to be playing. Obama is elitist hypocrite. Toll free number to join us, 800 259 800 259 for you to respond to what the globalists are doing. Uh, I, I just want to say this. I want to thank God for my provision and protection. And I want to thank all of you, the listeners. And I want to thank our AM and FM affiliates. Um, because I know reality is a crazy thing, and I know it sounds wild to even have me on the air, and I appreciate all of our stations. We're getting a lot more by the grace of God. I want to thank the real media, not the state-run media, uh, that have uh, helped us over the years. George Norrie really helped us get to a higher level. Uh, DrudgeReport.com uh, just, just, just obviously resonates with our analysis, and it's just turbocharging. It's not even the word, what we're doing. Um, probably get me killed if this keeps going, but whatever. At least we're going to beat the globalist because, I mean, can you imagine? It's like Alex Jones and Infowars.com. It's already a force with a giant rocket strapped to its butt. Uh, and so I'm like Wiley Coyote, you know, on top of the big rocket lighting the, lighting the fuse or Matt Drudge is back there. <laughs> so I want to thank you for loving liberty. And, and listen, when it's all said and done, I know we don't do this for because of ego, we do it because we don't want to be slaves. It's our instinct to get really upset about a bunch of lying crooks trying to disarm us. But uh, when it's all said and done, the people that have fought this tyranny, none of us are perfect. Uh, but the folks over at World Net Daily, people like Drudge and his crew, my crew, uh, man, there's so few. I mean, I've got to be honest. There's so few that really are hardcore, that really know what's going on. He's not perfect in many ways, but he defends the Bill of Rights, Michael Savage. Um I mean, there's just not many. Glenn Beck, you know, does nasty stuff to me on the side, but he does a lot of good work. So, you know what? As long as he doesn't say Ron Paul's supporters should be arrested again, like he said four years ago, I want to bury the hatchet with Glenn Beck. It's just, I say that a lot, and then he does, comes out and says I'm a fascist. But, you know what? Fascists wear fancy suits. They don't wear camo. The devil comes as an angel of light. The devil comes acting all fair and friendly and beautiful. But can you smell the stench of death? I mean, listen, this is so real, folks. We've got to circle the wagons if you want any future. And the issue is we resonate with the public, the public, but the, the public that's awake and has street smarts. And when you look at the general public, I mean, they're putting out all these fake polls saying only 15% want to keep their guns. Pure bull. I've got scores of scientific polls where the vast majority are pro-gun. The gun culture has been taking over, but people emotionally, when they say, if it stops the death of little children, would you want more reasonable restrictions? And then they call telephone trees of people they know have answered questions before. That's how Rasmussen and all these guys work. And they call up the welfare lady and say, do you want less gun violence? I sure do. Take the guns. It doesn't matter if 99% said that I had to be fed to the sharks. For no reason, you can't do that in a republic. We're not a pure democracy. The um, Greeks had a pure democracy for a while in some of their city-states. They'd have a bucket of white rocks for a yes vote, black rocks for a no vote. And, and the, um, the voters uh, would go and put their rocks in there. Only the upper gentry got to vote, but that was a democracy of the elite. And if the, who doesn't like what uh, Aesop just said? I don't like it. Well, the rocks say... 90% of the rocks say, Aesop, we're going to throw you off that cliff. We're going to make you drink hemlock. I, I mix them all together. A bunch of the, most of the famous philosophers you hear about were killed. You know what? We don't like what you say. You're going to die. How's that sound? See, because the pen is mightier than the sword. But when they come for the sword, you know they're dropping the hammer. We're taking your calls now and when Pastor Manning and when the state rep comes on who's been fighting the globalists. Most of the resistance is right here out of Texas, Wyoming, a little bit out of Tennessee. And it's all people who know that their ancestors fought to protect the Second Amendment. And there's resistance out of Kentucky. There's resistance out of Oregon. Uh, let's go to some phone calls uh, right now. J j remember, folks, if we beat these people, you're all going to be remembered as the next generation of founding fathers and mothers. 
I mean, this is the same kind of battle against even more evil people. I mean, and the King of England was a cupcake compared to what we got. Uh, Patriot Poet in Michigan, you're on the air. Yeah, Alex. Go ahead, sir. Hey, this is a uh, Google Bomb guy, man, from Michigan. Yes, sir. You're the guy that came up with the idea for the Google Bomb. Yes, sir. How you been? I had to take a break, Alex. Things got so crazy. But I got back uh, uh, as a member. I can't get on the site. Uh, prison plan, it's just jammed up. I had listening. Uh, I had you on through um, uh, uh, Infowars. That's the only way I could get a feed was to listen. And I'm a member on prison, prison plan and dot TV. Well, you know, I'm sorry. You need to send a customer service uh, email over there, and they'll try to get back to you on that. Sometimes we've changed the configuration of it. It works a little bit better. But thank you for the support. Listen, we're going to run out of time real quick. It's good to talk to you, like we're sitting around here at the gas station on the bench. But do you got any comments about what's just been announced and happened? Yeah, um, I, what I want to share with you is how far they've reached in, not just only with the Second Amendment, but um, a, a total a total takeover. I want to show you how far this tyranny has reached in. This happened this morning, Alex. i got to share this with you. The big conglomerate in uh, Michigan for um, energy uh, is DTE, or was, was Detroit Edison, right? Well, they've got this program running where they'll come in your home and they'll change all your light bulbs out to those energy star compact fluorescent yeah, light no, no, bulbs. No, 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 and then, and then yeah. later they, they come by law and you get fined if you don't have those light bulbs, and then it's forced right. home inspections. They're just getting you used to it. Right, well, that's see, that's it. They, they tried to walk, listen to this, with the maintenance man. They came trying to enter my girlfriend's apartment without her permission. They had to keep, they were with the, with the maintenance guy with the keys to their apartment without even calling her. And they tried to just literally walk No, no, no listen, home. listen. T we're, we're, we're about five years behind Australia and England. They always start this stuff as voluntary. Then it becomes mandatory. I appreciate your call, brother. Good to hear from you. Send an email to customer service at prisonplanet.tv. Okay, let's go to uh, Shannon in Ohio. You're on the air. Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I've been listening to you for about five years now, Alex. And uh, I've woke a lot of guys up. Um, I wasn't being a freak. I come at them slow just to open them up a little bit. And I, I bet with just me reaching out, I've probably touched like 2,000 people. Um, I've got some guys that are ready. Um, we're all sitting back waiting. We're all fathers. You know, we take care of our kids. And um, we're ready. We know that, you know, we all got to stand up. I've been a boxer my whole life. Uh, I've fought professional fighters. All I can tell these guys is don't be scared. Once you break the ice and stuff hits the fan, just be ready. And, and trust me, the spirit of our father, uh, founding fathers will be with you and give you the strength to see you through, okay? Well, that is the good part about a fight, not that I'm a professional fighter, but it's like that in anything. You're concerned until it starts, but boy, once it starts, it's like a duck to water, isn't it? Yes, it does. It's just your body takes over and you're capable of doing so much that you just got to break the ice. Don't be scared. Don't be scared of anybody because I tell you what right now. I'd rather stand and fight than get down on my knees like a coward and let them do what they want to do. Well, to here's the deal. Kids. They're not well-meaning, yeah. reasonable guys that want to take guns for little kids. They have those little kids up there to make them look like good guys. These are mafia scum that have sworn to get all our guns to make us slaves. And listen, I know you're ready to physically fight. Put that energy, like you already said you did, my brother, into info war. Redouble, redouble, redouble again, waking people up. You are the Paul Revere. You are the resistance. God bless you, Shannon. Good to hear from you. George, Andy, Bill, Chris, your calls are all coming up. And Pastor Manning as well. I am committed. Give me liberty or give me death. And now we've got police chiefs, sheriffs all across the United States from Texas to Washington State to Kentucky, sending letters to Obama saying, I am declaring a declaration of independence against your tyranny. I will not follow unlawful orders. And we need more towns, more cities, more county judges like Judge Head in Lubbock, who are getting on the show, talked to his office yesterday, to stand up and say, we're not going to comply with this. And when Wolf Blitzer and people say, well, you've got to comply with whatever the federal government says, why, Obama's the second coming of Abraham Lincoln. Notice they've been saying that for five years. And I said because they're getting ready for insurrection in the states. And now they're saying, yeah, he's going to be Lincoln. He's going to do whatever he wants. They want to cause a physical civil war. I got an idea. How about we have an info civil war? 
Okay, how about we stand up and say no? Just like what Pastor Manning did last year where he had a public trial that got a lot of the news laying out Obama and his criminal activities. People go, well, what's the point of his citizen's trial? You put publicly out there what the person's done. Many times people write a book exposing some criminal thing someone's done, and years later they get brought to justice. We've had police officers and others on that are trying to bring Bill Ayers and others to justice uh, for bombings they have evidence they were connected to but uh, didn't stay in prison for. And they've got witnesses. And it's the same thing. You've got to keep going after them, and that's why I put out a citizen's filing of articles of impeachment because it lists from deep research from constitutional lawyers all of the different things he's done that are impeachable on their face and beyond that there's a new hostage crisis al-qaeda link group says seven americans among 41 hostages seized in algeria attack our government is giving unlimited weapons in Libya and Syria to al-Qaeda jihadis who were then running all over Africa attacking people. I mean, that's one of the articles of impeachment. It's admitted our government is giving heat-seeking missiles to these people. They're putting the Muslim Brotherhood in in all these countries. And then saying the TSA needs to go down my pants because of them. Look at DrudgeReport.com. Citizens file articles of impeachment against Obama. Second congressman suggests impeachment. See, one said impeachment yesterday if he tries executive orders. And see, notice Obama made all these announcements, but he won't say what the particulars are. Well, guess what? We've written the articles from the different Democratic Party meetings they've had with Emanuel and Attorney General Holder, and they've said what it's going to be. Okay, so he's going to do executive orders on ammo, on importation. I'm going to go over that after Pastor Manning leaves us because I don't want to hog the time we've got with him. But citizens file articles of impeachment against Obama. I put out the fact that I'm a citizen, Alex Jones, signed by me. I'm putting out in the court of public opinion in the decade leading up to 1775, 1776. That's what the, the, the colonies did is they circulated petitions to government saying you better stop, you better stop. So I'm putting out what you've done. I have a media platform like a newspaper, and I'm saying you're committing crimes. I want you impeached. My name's John Hancock. My name's Alex Jones. And I don't want to be a founding father in rebirth of the republic. I'm just doing my job. But believe me, the, all of you fighting these tyrants are the John Hancocks, are the Patrick Henrys, are the Sam Adams. All of us that are in the media are like Sam Adams. The folks at the Drudge Report are like Sam Adams. The people at World Net Daily are like Sam Adams. We're like Sam Adams. You're like Sam Adams. We've got to hit them with the info war, the truth. Now, I give you uh, James David Manning, a chief pastor at the Otla World Missionary Church, reaches millions of people every month online in a big church there in town and has a huge soup kitchen program that's non-government run for the citizens of the area. And, of course, they attack the welfare state. That's why the establishment hates them. Um, on the 123rd Street in New York City and has been uh, a, a Otla since 1981. And uh, he's a very well-spoken gentleman and, and, and very knowledgeable. I didn't think Obama was as bad as he was saying five years ago when I had him on and then three years ago. But it's certainly starting to get really scary. And he, he prayed for me, and I appreciate that uh, when we were in New York. And he prayed because what he laid out is exactly true, and I want him to repeat that. Uh, because I had that same feeling before I saw his video. I had this thought. God laid it into my mind, my spirit. Hey, buddy, you're anti-gun. This, uh, uh, you're fighting the anti-gun guys. They will use a anti-gunner to kill you, a crazy, to then say, see, even this pro-gunner got killed by somebody with a gun. And uh, he said God laid that upon his heart. So I wanted to get him on to talk about this and give his basic take on what's happening. Pastor, thanks for popping in with us today. Listen, Alex, thanks for having me today. Glad to be on your broadcast. Well, I've been ranting and raving. You've just seen the speech, high-fiving, using kids. What is your take on what's happening? Well, uh, there's several things that's happened. Let me just point up the fact that I am convinced that the CNN uh, conference that they had or the interview that they had after you were being on there with Piers Morgan was a direct attempt to suggest to some crazy loon out there to take you out. I'm confident of that. And that's the reason why I pray. And I think all Americans need to understand what they're trying to do. They want to silence you. You have become 
the voice for patriots and Americans, for gun owners and Americans, for the Second Amendment. You are indeed the spokesman for that. I'm, I'm surprised that the NRA has not called you over and enlisted you to help them uh, to protect Americans and their rights to own guns. You are the spokesman for a well-armed militia. And uh, Obama doesn't want that. And we need to be aware of the fact that Obama is the type of person, and the people we're dealing with at present, they are the type of people that will take you out. They have no problems seeing you put in a grave and sending someone to take you out, or even sending someone from the, uh, perhaps from the, from the military or some other organization to take you out. So uh, that's the reason why I prayed, Alex. Now, you asked me another question a few moments ago about what's happening with Obama using children as a shield, like Saddam Hussein did uh, in his conference today. Is that what you're asking about? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, he, 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 and that's, that's what he did. I think that he, he is he's tear-jerking the American people, tugging at their heartstrings by putting those children up there and using them as pawns. It looked like a chess game with Obama being the king and, and Joe Breakdancer Biden being the queen and those little children being the pawns around him pushing forward his executive orders on gun control, taking our weapons. That's what that was all about today. How did you know Obama was going to be so bad? Because, I, I mean, I didn't support him, but I, uh, I didn't imagine he was this evil uh, four years ago. You know, one of the things, Alex, I tell people all the time that I am a spiritual individual. And people, a lot of people have problems with that. Some people are able to understand it. But I saw spiritually, Alex, in this man, the depths of the evil that he represents and that what he would do to this nation. And I began to scream as loud as I could uh, when I first saw him appear on the scene. And then as he moved closer uh, to uh, winning the office of presidency, all, although it illegally and the hysteria around him, I saw that this is an evil man. And, and Alex, it ain't over with yet. It ain't hardly over with yet. We have a lot more evil coming from this man that we have to endure. But I can say this, I'm confident that we will prevail, that he will not win. We will get the victory uh, in this process, but it will not be easily won. And it will not be the faint, for the faint of heart to, to, to uh, persevere against what Obama is trying to do to us as a people. Did you notice that Ob that Biden could hardly stop smiling. He was fighting smiling, and Obama was trying to act sad, but he, he acted like that, you know, he was at the Kentucky Derby in front row seats. I mean, he acted like a pig, and you know what? Well, I, I think that Biden finally feels that he's given us some recognition, uh, something that will give him a legacy. I'm not sure exactly what Biden was up about today. Obama was very coy today. He was not his usual ebullient self, and he wasn't quite as arrogant today as he normally is as well. I'll have to look at that again to see and really read what went on there. Well, I saw the cover. He was acting uh, coy, but in the eyes, he he looked he looked evil. I mean, uh, and in fact, we're hearing more of this from his people. You saw the nice Obama. Now you're going to see the real Obama. Well, that's the thing. I think this this so-called second term that he is employing that we're going to see the real Obama. We're going to see really what he's made of and uh, the evil. I don't think he's going to make any attempts to hide anything. He, he, I, I'm not surprised that he's not probably promoting Muslim Brotherhood and Islamic ideas more. We're going to see who he really is in this. I saw this four years ago. It's amazing. Uh, we're going to go to break, but I want to ask uh, your take on ways to oppose him and to push for an impeachment I mean, don't we need to list all the impeachable crimes he's committed and really press Congress to start the impeachment trial? Well, you know, I had a CIA Columbia Obama sedition and treason trial regarding his uh, forged uh, certificate of graduation from Columbia. I explored in depth, Alex, uh, his uh, participation with the CIA, with the Mujahideens in Afghanistan when the Soviet Union invaded them back in 1979, I think it was. I went through that step by step, and I discovered that Obama... Stay there. I want to talk about this. you got a federal visit. Looking back. Pastor Manning is our guest for one more segment. I want to get him back in the next few weeks for a full hour. Atla.org is his website, A-T-L-A-H. In the next segment, uh, we are now analyzing the vague statements of Obama, but they track and follow uh, exactly what we thought in the proposal. I have this from the Washington Times. 
where they're just going to take guns whenever they find them in your car, or even if they're legal, and you have no warrants, and then they're going to decide if you get them back, and, and uh, it's the no-fly, no-buy list. It's just they're just going to put you on a no-gun list. And it's official. DHS to expand and formalize coordination on gun control efforts. Homeland Security is the takeover arm, and it will now be used to uh, go after gun owners. Okay, uh, Pastor Manning, you got cut off by the break, and you were getting into uh, the public trial you put on to uh, demonstrate all this. It's the same thing with uh, a move towards impeachment, getting behind congressmen that are talking about it, uh, getting the points out about why we should impeach. We've got to get on the offensive. What is your take on ways to turn the tide? Because, uh, because these guys are coming for us. Well, you know, the impeachment idea is a good idea. Whether or not we can succeed with that is the question because, you know, the Senate has to approve of it. And the Senate is right now controlled by the Democrats, Harry Reid. And so I'm not sure you're going to be able to actually put an impeachment through on Obama. But it will be at least something to keep the, the nation aware of the fact that this man is indeed evil and probably force him to make a move or force the American people to just outright reject him, no confidence in him, whether the impeachment goes forward or not. So I think the action is a good action. Absolutely. Well, you know, nobody thought the Senate was going to go after Nixon, but then they got the votes. It never even had to go to the Senate because they had the hearings in the House. We need real fast and furious hearings. We need real hearings on the psychotropic drugs. We need real hearings on all of his insider trading and the Democrats' insider trading. We need to get on the offensive with these guys. Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. And that's the move I think is most important, that we go on the offense. Right now, we've been defending against the thing. He comes out and does something, and we react to it. Well, that needs to stop. It needs to stop immediately. And we need to move against him confidently, not being afraid of all the stereotypes and all the things that have protected him over the past three years. So offense is indeed the, the defense that we need to employ against Obama at this time. Why do you think they're in such a hurry to get the guns? I mean, the Germans are demanding their gold back. We know that they're, they're raising taxes. The economy is going to crater. Uh, I mean, what is Obama's end game? I think the economy uh, getting ready to crater is perhaps one of the pressing reasons why Obama wants to take the guns, because we're going to see ourselves uh, in another year or so out in the streets begging for bread, or at least the economy being so cratered that people will be unemployed and, uh, and people will be ready to take to the streets. So that's the reason why he needs guns out of the hands of people. But the other thing, Alex, I told you that... Um, when I was on your broadcast, I think three or four years ago, that Obama does not want to give up this power that he has. And unlike any other president, he is closer to and, and employs more power than any other president in the history of this nation. And uh, he very possibly sees the opportunity to stay in office as long as he possibly can. Martial law is one way. And if calling for martial law, he can't have guns on the street. So take them out of the way right away, remove that obstacle, and then deploy the other kinds of things he wants to do. You know, a congressman has pointed it out. You pointed it out so eloquently about Obama's the king, Biden's his queen, the little kids are pawns. We've got to come up with a 3D graphic of that or something for the nightly news, Pastor. But, I mean, I think Obama's got a problem overreaching using these little kids like pawns. I mean, this was a sickening display. It, 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 that's exactly the kind of stuff Saddam Hussein pulled. Normally, I can stomach a lot of stuff, Alex, and uh, when Obama has crowds of black people or Hispanic people or whoever behind him, women or whoever, I mean, I can deal with it. It's just politics. It's, it, he's promoting himself. They want an opportunity to be there. But this was a terrible misuse, a bastard misuse of these children today and calling their names and using them to pro promote his diabolical plans, I thought was just off the charts. Well, you're right. Uh, again, uh, Pastor Manning, we've only got about a minute left. Anything else you think is important to add for folks? Well, I want to ask America to pray for you, Alex. I mean, I don't think people realize just how serious this issue is. Obama wants our guns. He wants this nation. He wants to trash the Constitution. And you are a powerful voice that have fired up the American people. And uh, people need to stand with you. They need to pray for you. Uh, that God will sustain you through this battle that's ahead of us. So my one request before leaving today is that all Americans would bow their knee and their heads in continual prayer for your safety and your abilities to keep doing what you're doing. 
Well, thank you, Pastor. We need to pray for you as well and for everybody fighting against evil. But I know it's the prayers that are sustaining me. From the bottom of my heart, I feel that connection with you, Pastor. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Man, we'll be right back with State Rep who's fighting. Ladies and gentlemen, we're joined for the balance of the hour. And then I promise everybody holding, we're going to get to all your calls for the entire third hour and cover uh, this, this foggy legislation. But it's not foggy. And so I have this huge responsibility. I've got to go back to all our articles we've written the last two weeks. Well, even before that, the last month, uh, where we went back through uh, Handgun Control Incorporated and these different meetings they've had that have been on C-SPAN with the Attorney General and others, and they've laid out what they're going to do. And they're just going to pull over uh, gun owners and harass you. They're going to raid people's houses claiming you've got illegal guns. Uh, they're going to uh, just say, we say you're mentally ill. You can't own a gun now. Uh, they're going to upwards of $5 billion additional funding to harass gun owners. They're going to try to ram through legislation to physically make you turn them in. Dianne Feinstein has that. And it's totally, absolutely unconstitutional. And it's unconstitutional on its face. And we have President Obama running four years ago, pledging to never try to take any guns. And you have the FBI crime statistics of gun crime the last 15, 16 years. We're going to show these again in a moment. Down 49% nationwide on average and 20 plus percent reduction in total violent crime. I mean, the big secret is crime where guns are used is going way down. But I don't want to hog the time here. Representative Steve Toth uh, joins us and he's made uh, national news uh, coming up with a legislative plan uh, to battle back against this and for the state of Texas to not recognize unconstitutional federal laws. Even if they tried to get, just to explain to people, because I was watching him on Wolf Blitzer and he'll be able to elaborate on this. Blitzer was interrupting him, acting like it was just preposterous. Congress could pass a law saying turn your guns in. It's really unconstitutional and abhorrent. And you'd have to get a constitutional amendment. And even that is highly debatable because it doesn't give you the right. It points out the unalienable unalienable right that's already there. Um, so he joins us. His career began uh, at a company, a Johnson & Johnson Company, and, and led to work as a regional trainer where he developed a practice management consulting program called a, a Residency to Retirement. He served as Director of Marketing for uh, uh, Apple. Uh, and it goes on to 99. And it, uh, the point is he is an entrepreneur out there, uh, not one of these sponges, and he's been involved with the Tea Party uh, and involved uh, in a lot of different community and church organizations. And it's just, uh, just a really exciting to have him join us, uh, State Representative uh, uh, Steve Toth. Thank you so much for coming on, sir. Hey, Alex. Thanks so much for having me. You bet. I mean, I'm chomping at the bit here because this is so outrageous. Why do you think Obama's coming for the guns? And what do you think of him like Saddam Hussein surrounding himself with children? And then we'll move into your legislation. Well, I mean, it's, it, it goes all the way back to Rahm Emanuel. Don't, you know, don't let any, any crisis go to waste. This is part of their agenda. This has always been part of their agenda to, to make it difficult for law-abiding citizens to own a gun. What was your take? Uh, did, did, did you have a chance to watch his speech? Yeah, I did. I was, I was actually in the studio here in Austin while he was giving the speech. And, and again, it, it's funny because Wolf Blitzer said, after it was done, he said, he gave it in great detail. Well, I'm sorry, there are 23 things, and he laid out maybe three or four of them. And at the end of the day, this is no different than Obamacare. You, you deliver a bill that's 4,000 pages that no one has a chance to read. It gets voted in, and then it goes miraculously, goes from 4,000 pages to 40,000 pages. And this is how he does things. And it's just, it's just, it's just it, it, at some point, we've got to say enough is enough and stand up and say our Constitution matters. We're not a democracy. We're a constitutional republic. We don't vote on whether or not we have liberty. We don't vote on whether or not you can or can't do something. This, we have this article. It's called the Constitution. Our rights come from God and are enumerated in that document. And it's very clear about what we can and can't do. I agree with you, and uh, your call for the Second Amendment Preservation Act uh, here in Texas has become a big national story. A lot of other states are saying they're going to try to introduce uh, similar similar legislation. Uh, and, and Wolf Blitzer was trying to interrupt you so that you couldn't explain the constitutionality of this and how it works. But um, I want you to be able to elaborate on it. But expanding on that, 
800 plus cities, 30 something states last time I checked, don't arrest illegal aliens for even drunk driving because they're just above the law. They don't arrest them for being illegal. They don't even take them to be deported. They won't deport most of them most of the time now because Obama signed an order. Now, that's all unconstitutional with the feds and the states ignoring the law. Well, why can't we ignore federal laws if they're clearly unconstitutional? Exactly. I mean, it, it, you, you, you nailed it. You absolutely nailed it. At some point, you've got to draw a line in the sand and say enough is enough. We're not sliding anymore uh, towards towards a uh, um, towards a, a king. I, I grew up in upstate New York. Uh, I moved my family here because we believed it was the greatest uh, greatest state in the in the nation, greatest opportunity to to raise our children in freedom and prosperity, and. Um, the thing that gets me about what's going on in New York right now, where they're limiting, limiting lawful uh, people to own a gun, make it more difficult for them to get a gun. Uh, it was just three or four weeks ago that this crazed killer, this is, a, this is a guy that beat his mother to death with a hammer. He beat his mother to death with a hammer, bludgeoned her head with a hammer. No, by the way. Hammers are the reason. Uh, more, more people died from being bludgeoned with a hammer than... Than, than any kind of rifle, not a, let alone an assault rifle. But That's right. He, he beat his mother to death with a hammer, and then the the, 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 the libs in, uh, in New York uh, sent him to jail, where they promptly let him out. They promptly let him out. What did he do? He set his house on fire a few weeks ago, shot two volunteer firefighters, first responders, people that you know give their lives to save others. He shot them. Like a like a coward that he is, he shot them dead. And what does New York State legislation do? Rather than getting on getting on TV and saying, "Boy, we blew it. We haven't made it tough t tough enough on criminals. We haven't kept. We should have locked this guy away and thrown away the key. We should have put legislation in place to ensure that this guy would never see another sunset again." Instead, what do they do? It's 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 this baloney. They go and create legislation that has nothing to do. This guy, this guy got this gun illegally. He didn't buy it at a gun show. He didn't buy it at a, at a shop. He, he, this is this was a stolen weapon. And it, 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 it just we don't want to have a real discussion about what to do. We we just want theatrics. We just want games. And, and it's just it, again, it's just another opportunity to to rotor right. I agree. State Representative hailing from Texas, uh, Steve Toth, is our guest. And we're going to give you his website as well as if you want to get behind him and support him. But uh, here's the bottom line. We either get on the offensive like you're doing or it's over because they are going to use these dead children. They are going to wrap themselves around this tragedy. They are going to bill all gun owners as responsible, calling the NRA mass murder enablers, uh, saying gun owners are all secretly Ku Klux Klan as Fox Sports has said, we either get on the offensive and say, in every case, and it's now come out with a Batman shooter, that he was on a bunch of psychotropic drugs, they've been on drugs where the inserts say they can cause you to commit mass murder or kill yourself, a massive increase. The guy that shot an Austin cop for no reason, no reason at a Walmart, was bombed out of his brain on Xanax. Uh, he was a Xanax addict uh, 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 taking uh, more than what you're even supposed to. I mean, I've known people on Xanax. It destroys their lives. I mean, I've talked to doctors who will not prescribe it. And, and of course, I mean, uh, I heard this guy shot a cop for no reason. I said, I bet that guy's on psychotropics. Boom, he was on antipsychotic, basically. And now the Batman shooter, Harris, Kleibold, in like 99% of the cases, they're trying to suppress the file on Lanza, who tried to buy a gun not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, five times the month before, couldn't. His mother had gone through some of the strictest gun laws in the country to get these semi-autos, if you believe the story. And again, they ignore all that and say, because a guy that murdered his mother with a hammer went and got an illegal gun and shot people, I've got to give my guns up. Because a guy went and killed his mommy and went and uh, It's always devil-worshipping goths on drugs. I mean, if anybody needs to be profiled, it's these guys. Instead, I've got to lose my rights. So, so what about getting on the offensive here? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Exactly. I mean, everyone in every state has got to take an interest in this thing. If you think that this is just about guns, you're crazy. This is about eroding all, all of your rights. And I said to Governor Perry last night, you know, I, and he's, he's behind this as well. And 
I had such a great discussion with him. He walked up to me when, when I was talking to him about the, about the bill, and he grabbed me by both, by both arms, and he said, said, Steve, he said, this isn't about hunting. This isn't about my right to be a sportsman. If I want to use an assault-style rifle to kill hogs, that's my right. And if I don't want to kill hogs and I just want to have that in my gun safe in case I need it against the federal government or whatever, uh, that's my right. Uh, he is just a liberty-loving <laughs> Absolutely. Governor, and, I'm and I'm thankful he's my governor. But, you know, the, the deal is y'all need to reach out to your elected officials. This is a fight that we all need to be involved in. And it's not just about guns. It's how we educate our children. It's the kind of food that we eat and drink. It's everything. We've got to stop this. And we've got to stop it now. Well, I mean, I, I disagree with Rick Perry on quite a few things, like the NAFTA highway and stuff. But the governor has been uh, resisting and, 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 and really defending the Second Amendment, and, and we need to see more of that. And I've got to say, I'm proud of Texas, uh, but also Kentucky, Washington State, many other states that are resisting. But I have introduced into the public uh, forum articles of impeachment, uh, and we've got a uh, Texas congressman uh, who has uh, said he will introduce articles of impeachment if Obama tries to use executive orders. Well, now he's saying 23 executive orders, but like you said earlier, won't tell us what they are. Well, I know what they've said they're going to do because the anti-gun groups ha have press conferences on C-SPAN. They, know, I mean, I know what they're going to do. They're just going to have the federal government put you on a list, no judge, no jury, and say you can't own a gun. They're going to ban well, importation. Was, Go ahead. A couple days ago, he was talking about there, there's, there's got to be an administrative fix or solution. That's code for registering our guns. I'm just here to tell you. I no, mean, that's I, it. I, yeah. That's it in a nutshell. And when that happens, we're done. We're, we're just done. And, and, you know, frankly, there needs to be some outrage for, for those of you that are listening in New York and against Sheldon Silver and, and the, the outrageous leadership uh, that, that he is that, that he has demonstrated in the state of New York and what he's brought that state down to. It's just it's a shame. Well, it's so creepy that, that Bloomberg and Como and, and all these people, Diane Feinstein has introduced a bill that, that, that says you'll have to come re-register your guns and they can, quote, do a forced buyback if they want, all this vague, really draconian yeah, oh, language. Yeah. They've all got concealed carry, I've played clips for admitting it, and bodyguards. I mean, she's worth $100 million right. in right. her financial filings. Most people... I mean, I'm a successful talk show host, but I mean, I don't have the money to have bodyguards and stuff. I mean, I know well, you don't have the money uh, to have bodyguards, I, I would either. guess. I don't either. My campaign manager two years ago was walking through the, Bruce, if you're listening, love you, buddy. But as he was walking through the, the parking lot at the Woodlands Mall, um, two guys started following him. So he starts taking the circuitous route, circuitous route around, the, around cars and everything. And sure enough, they're still following him. He walks around a van, drops the package, draws. And as they came around the corner, he looked at these two guys and said, yes, can I help you? And they took off running. He immediately called um, 911. And uh, like any good concealed handgun license owner, he said, I was in fear of my life. Two men were coming after me, and I drew. And the police arrived. He described them. And he said, you know, they, they, those two guys, he said, we're, we've been trying to catch them. Good thing you didn't shoot them. But. Um, we've been trying to catch those guys. They've mugged two people that day. So evidently the president and, and uh, Nancy Pelosi and Dianne Feinstein, they're allowed to have protection, uh, but I'm not allowed to protect myself. It's incredible. Uh, I mean, we have crime maps from local governments compiled then by the FBI, and you can see where you have increased gun ownership, you have lower home invasions, lower crime rates, lower muggings, lower carjackings, and the area where people are disarmed is where this happens. I mean, I've been in New York myself, and I weigh 260 pounds, and I'm a pretty strong guy. I mean, I'm not like, you know, He-Man or something, but I can bench press, you know, 350 pounds. I can, you know, stuff like that. And... I've had guys come and sit on both sides of me and ask me what's in my bag and stuff and try to intimidate me. Yeah. I mean, this is not the way I want to live. And it, it's just so despicable that these mob boss types like Rahm Emanuel and people uh, consciously have this criminal instinct to want to disarm us. Right. It, it, that's it in a nutshell. Anything that they can do. You know, we don't have the, we don't have the Second Amendment for hunting. We don't have the Second Amendment 
for putting uh, trophy guns on our wall. We have the Second Amendment so that we can preserve the First Amendment, which is the, the free right to assemble and free speech. And when people live in fear of the government, government, we will have tyranny. And as soon as they take our guns away from us, <clears throat> and again, this is a slow erosion, we will lose that freedom. And we've, we've got to get to the point where we say enough is enough and stand up. Well, sure. If the federal government wasn't buying 1.6 billion hollow point bullets, if they weren't deploying armored personnel carriers, if they weren't dressing like Darth Vader, if they weren't trying to gut our borders and calling for world government, if they didn't have four network TV shows bad-mouthing the Founding Fathers. I mean, these are obvious usurpers. They're, they're going down the list of things tyrants do and double-checking every box. So that's all the more reason. It's like Jesse Ventura said, when the government disarms and the government lays down its guns, then I'll think about it. And obviously that's tongue-in-cheek. The point right. is, is that they are arming against us. We need our guns to protect ourselves. And, and, and the media always tries to act like, Wow, uh, you know, the state rep just said we need guns to protect ourselves from the federal government. Well, that's what the founders said. And if you don't yeah. like that, you're not an American. No, I mean, that's, that's not like a new thought. I mean, this, this is something that our founding fathers knew that, that, that just like gravity, um, you know, you, you hold something in there and you drop it, it's going to hit the ground. Our liberty, our freedom will, will erode from, from the gravi gravity of tyranny. It, it's a slow erosion. It's not a quick on-off switch. It's a slow erosion. And we, we have got to be on guard against it. And, but it is you know, speeding up, though. It is, it is speeding up at, yeah, at an astronomical rate, exponential rate. So, yeah, I mean, and, and yes, the, it, our founding father said when, when government lives in fear of the people, there's liberty. When people live in fear of the government, there's tyranny. They understood that. They understood it well because of what they endured through King George. We don't want another king. When we come back, I know listeners already have, have heard your report on it on WOAI. It's already made national news via the drudgereport.com and, and infowars.com. But I want to come back and give out your website. But I also want to talk about what your uh, piece of proposed legislation would do and how we would implement it. And it's very, very simple. I mean, the feds won't even pick up the illegal aliens if police do arrest them. Uh, I've talked to the police, it's been on the news. So if that's illegal and unconstitutional, because that's something you're supposed to do, then how can the states get in trouble if they don't do something that's unconstitutional? So we're going to talk about your piece of legislation and how we can get it duplicated and different ways we can get on the offense against this tyranny with the representative from Texas. Noticed, Obama just said, I want to get everybody free health care. You deserve it. And then we finally get the bill. It's death panels. It's written by the insurance companies to double your rates. Doesn't give anybody free health care. Obama says, I'm not going to raise taxes unless you make a quarter million dollars a year, I promise. Raises a bunch of taxes on poor people. Massively. Uh, I have a responsibility because they've bragged to the Washington Post. I've read their quotes. I've watched their press conferences. We know their attack profile. We know what the 23 executive actions are going to be. We know... And he hinted at a bunch of them in the speech, but I was talking to state representative uh, here from Texas who's introduced the Firearms uh, Preservation Act. And uh, Steve, continuing with what you were breaking down uh, you, uh, during the break, describing what Obama's doing masterfully, he's like, hey, I just don't want little kids to get killed. I'm here. I'm going to propose something. DHS is going to run it nationwide. Five billion dollars. Get ready. Yeah, I mean, well, he's masterful at this. It's it's smoke and mirrors. You hide behind children. You you pull the heartstrings uh, to make an emotional connection with with moms and dads, and then you introduce this nebulous legislation. And then once the once the ne'er do wells in Washington pass it, then what he does is he takes his his bureaucrats. The only the only thing worse than a politician that has been in office too long is a bureaucrat that has been in office too long. And these bureaucrats are the ones that craft the legislation once it's passed. Obamacare was only about 4,000 pages only, right? But once it was, you know, the bill that, that you, you had to pass before you read it, well, that, that thing is upwards of 40,000 pages of regulation today. And the devil in this thing is really truly in the details. And you won't find out what the details are. This is the way he does things. This, it doesn't, it, it, the thing is that they're just, just too controversial to make it onto the House floor or the well of the Senate. That stuff isn't seen. It's not, it's not going to be addressed in this, in this legislation. And so they're going to keep it nice and nebulous. 
warm, fuzzy children, puppies, and then, you know, pass this. And then you pass it and you find out that our guns are registered and, and they're, they're, they're being taken away. And by the way, that's what makes me so angry is that Diane Feinstein, we have the clip of her saying, if I have my way, all your guns are turned in, Mr. and Mrs. America. And then I have her new bill where it says, oh, yeah, you got to come re-register them. We'll decide if you can keep them, but we need money for a forced buyback. And then Obama's up there going, it's just reasonable. We just want crazy people not to have guns. I, I mean, it's such a deception. You'd think once the public learned that they lie so much, then everyone would turn against them. But it's almost like people have just gotten used to being lied to. Well, check, so check this out. Um, when when the liberals say that the war on drugs has been an, an abject failure, they say it's because interdiction is impossible. You can't keep drugs out of the country. You can't keep drugs out of the hands of someone that wants drugs. But evidently, they think you can't keep firearms out of the out of the hands of of, of criminals. I mean, it's just it's just pure. Oh, well, that was my next point. They're announcing Homeland Security's main duty. It's not Al-Qaeda anymore. You've seen the training manuals, gun owners, returning veterans, uh, conservatives. They're now announcing this is what Homeland Security is, is a new thing to harass and nickel and dime gun owners where somebody's got a legal AR-15, not modified, guy has no criminal record, businessman, what was it, in Minnesota. He pulls the trigger at the shooting range. It goes full auto. They rat on him, and he goes to jail. And the ATF says, we know he didn't do it on purpose, but we still want to put you in jail. Do five more minutes with us. I know you've got to go, but I want to talk about your Firearms Preservation Act, how okay. people find it. Fire out the best website, sir. Um, the best way to get a hold of us at this point is, is just on Facebook. Um, Steve for House District 15. All right, stay with us. From Texas, Steve Tove represents uh, District 15, and he is on us for five more minutes. I've got some big breaking news uh, after he leaves us in the next segment. I'm just going to leave it at that. Big breaking news. And this is this is confirmed. This is, uh, well, we'll uh, break it down on the other side and go over what this means. Uh, getting into your State Preservation Act, uh, tell people about that. I guess they can go to Steve. Um, Steve Tove for House District 15. So, on, on Facebook, on Facebook. So that's the best place to visit, and yeah, they, that's yeah, that's the best place. How do people find a piece uh, of legislation? How do they find a copy of it so they can get we're, it to the? Yeah, we're coming out. We're, we're not out of legislative council yet, so it's being drafted right now, and um, we've been told by Ledge Council will be done Friday, and then it's going to be in the hands of the Attorney General. Um, Reason being, we want to make sure that it's is it's buttoned up as as as, as best we can. Um, we're going to put it in his hands and let him dot the i's and cross the t's, and then we'll we'll go from there. Um, we only serve in Texas 140 days every two years, and we can't introduce legislation in the first couple months. So the neat thing about this, and you're probably familiar with the TSA bill that um, Representative Simpson put through a couple years ago. Absolutely, it's going to be back now. Well, the, the you know, and, and the local radio station there in, in in Houston said, "Well, hope this isn't like the TSA bill; it didn't get passed." And said, well, the TSA bill didn't catch fire until like April or May last year. It's January, so the the nice thing about where we're at right now is is that, and thanks to Texans um, that have just shown so much support for this thing that they're calling their elected officials and saying, "We're behind this." They're respectfully calling their officials and saying. We're, we're behind this, and we appreciate it if you'd be behind it. And that's the best way to talk to one of these people because at the end of the day, um, we, we serve here. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's really not even – I have a full-time job. I own a company. I have employees, and I, I do this on the side. I'm paid $600 a month. It barely you know, covers your expenses. No, you're a statesman. You, you're what we need in there, and I just appreciate you uh, being on the front lines of this, and we've got a good chance to get this rammed through. And it will take time, and we've got uh, a good chance to get other states to pick it up. Because what are, uh, in closing, a few other areas we can get on the offense? Um, reach out through social media to people and, and start start the discussion. You know, I'm amazed when when you when you get under a liberal skin, they're calling they're calling my office right now, f bomb after f bomb after f bomb, because. They can't have an intellectual discussion around this because their their position is just so weak. Well, they're authoritarians. 
oh, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, I mean, it, we just we just need to ramp up the discussion, and we need to do it with with integrity and and honesty. And, and I mean, I want to put it back on them too. Stop saying we have blood on our hands. If anybody has blood on their hands, it's the drug manufacturers putting mentally ill people on stuff that's known to cause psychotic outbreaks, and it's making public schools gun-free zones. Uh, I love the NRA's it's, new it's ad. A, it's, it's just a soft target, and, and Wayne LaPierre hit the nail right on the head. The only way to stop an evil person with a gun is a good person with a gun. It, it's the only way it happens. You look at all of these shootings that have happened as of late, and it wasn't until an armed citizen or a police officer stopped them. Well it's said. Good. Period. So, appreciate you. Representative, uh, thank you so much for spending time with us. And uh, thank you for being a leader for Texas and America. We'll talk to you again soon. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Al. Thank you. He'll know more tomorrow, by the way, as, as, as more of Obama's plans leak out. And let me tell you, that's what makes this so much worse, is that they are going with a sneaky uh, angle. But that's what they always do. He writes the NDAA, then says he's against it, then says, don't worry if it passes, I'll veto it. Then he doesn't veto it, he signs it, and it turns out he wrote it. That was all the plan. So there's no telling what they're going to do, and then they're going to get the legislation written up separately and then have another mass shooting and then just sign a bunch of executive orders. But we've got some very important news I'll announce after the break. Then we'll go to all the callers that are holding 800-25-9931. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to your phone calls uh, here to respond to the president's nebulous announcement. They have told us 23 orders and executive orders, legislation. We know the plan. It's Dianne Feinstein's bill. It's the other 10 bills that are in Congress. Taxes on ammo, background checks on ammo. Re-gun registration, can't sell guns to anybody. When you die, you've got to turn your guns in. Can't transfer uh, anything semi-auto, can't even sell it to a gun dealer. Uh, government wants to put you on a no-gun buy list, no judge, no jury, you're just on it. They said last week in a press conference on C-SPAN what they were going to do. The Attorney General, the Chicago mob boss, uh, Rahm Emanuel, all of them. And they got up there and they laid it out. And we've gone over it, but I'm going to have my writers go back through and just say, you know, here's the plan. I mean, if you had the December issue of the magazine, even before Sandy Hook, we, we tell you the plan. It's been the same plan Dianne Feinstein's had for 20 years, you know, where she says, if I ever get the votes, Mr. and Mrs. America, you're going to turn your guns in. Okay? And then we're like, hey, folks, Obama's going to try to take your guns. Oh, he said he'd never take any of my guns. That's a firm pledge. You also pledge you not raise anybody's payroll taxes, but... Some of the lowest paid Americans got them. 77% of tax paying Americans have their payroll tax raised. People making $30,000 a year. And it's so sad, these gullible people, because they look at you like, like oh, you're just mad because you're not on the winning team. And then meanwhile, Obama is totally chumping these people. I mean, they really think, oh, their guy got in. You know, everything's great. Uh, I've got the Washington Times here breaking down his point. Uh, and it uh, just goes over it. It's basically just track everybody's guns and get them all registered so they can take your guns and harass gun owners and go after everybody. Uh, also, then we're going to your calls here. Uh, also, uh, we've got DHS to expand formalized coordination on gun efforts, gun control efforts. So I told you, internally, they're all about getting our guns. It's not about Al-Qaeda, which they use in Libya and Syria or who they let get on the plane to come over here so they can put naked body scanners in. Al-Qaeda is used to take your liberties, okay? Period. And DHS does one thing. They train to take on veterans and gun owners, libertarians, conservatives, and rural communities. They see you as the undomesticated who don't want to be a little collectivist with them, okay? They want you dumbed down on welfare, begging for an Obama phone. And by the way, you want welfare, you got to take these shots that kill you deader than a hammer down the road. Uh, here's the Daily Caller reporting. There is now a second congressman, second GOP congressman, suggest impeachment over executive action for gun control. And see, Obama blinked. He said he's going to have executive orders and said it's for the kids. That way they can just say, hey, we got to do something. It's for the kids. Aren't I sweet? I high-five the kids. Like Saddam Hussein high-fiving kids. I high-five the kids. I high-five. We're going to show you that video coming up. Uh, it's on YouTube. We got it up at InfoWars.com. You know, we are going to do a great job. We high-fived. 
And then meanwhile, well, you got to get behind the bill and it's a gun confiscation bill. But they never even say that, knowing most of the public doesn't go and read legislation. So there is all of that uh, info. And that is exactly what we expected. Now, here's the announcement, and I'm going to your phone calls. Something that absolutely, yeah, there it is, totally disgusting. If you're a radio listener, and we're, uh, the crowd is clapping, and the kids, high five Obama. He, he, he looks to the kids, and he says, I'm going to get it done for you. Because you've written me letters, and, and, and this is what you want. He wants to steal their birthright, so they live in like a big mega city being raped and and, and robbed and, and, and taxed into oblivion. I mean, this is the global government that does medical experiments on little kids, nerve gases our own troops, injects black people with syphilis, totally ruthless. That's who's hijacked the country. And here's Obama, the gangster expression of it. And, oh, if you don't turn your guns in, you're not for these cute little kids. I mean, this is the worst, most hollow, mindless exploitation meant to manipulate women to get women to be anti-gun, because they're panicking. The gun culture's taking over. Women are out buying guns. Crime rates are dropping. They've got to hide that and point out that school shootings are going up while everything else is going down because they've been hyping the daylights out of it. Now, here is the announcement. I don't just get up here. Most websites have an IT problem, and they say, we got hacked, we got you know this or that. Years ago, somebody hacked our website and posted an image of a naked woman on a motorcycle on the front page. Um, we've had plenty of denial of service attacks coming out of China, uh, coming out of Japan, but out of U.S. military bases, they use them to basically zombie the computers to then attack us. We've had all sorts of attacks that go on. I don't talk about it. But I've had senior cybersecurity people you know, who've been in government and out of government say, I don't know how you keep your side up. And there's been a lot of hackers out there that have also given us tips and helped us, and we're eternally thankful for that. We've got some great IT people. Uh, but in the last two weeks, we've had two different dirty tricks done that are very sophisticated. I'm not going to get into what they did or what they exploited, but it's government-level type stuff. And uh, it's very sophisticated. And so we've got to basically watch the site 24 hours a day now. I'm having to hire more IT people just to watch it 24 hours a day. I'm hiring an outside consulting firm to be able to deal with this. Uh, and then they went ahead and hit us with an old-fashioned denial of service attack. It's, it's undoubtedly, we are getting a lot of traffic today. And traffic's much higher than it's ever been. But, I, but we were thinking early on, this is an all-time record traffic, which it pretty much would be, or, or almost a record. But we can see, and they've got graphs in there, in fact, I wanted to get shots of all that so I can do a report because this is newsworthy, showing that it's 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 denial of service from a whole bunch of zombie computers, government computers, hijacked university computers, you name it. The minute Obama started speaking today, um, about five minutes before he did, when Joe Biden was up there is when this started. The site is up right now for now, and it appears they're very upset about the move to impeach Obama. And I mean, listen, the globalists kill and assassinate people all over the world. I am ready for them to kill me, okay? And, and I don't think it's going to happen because I'm so outspoken and my grandma's praying real hard for me and I don't want to die. I'll never commit suicide. Uh, but, but I mean, seriously, uh, I, I've, I've not made a big deal over the years about some of the other stuff that's gone on because it just sounds like a movie and people aren't going to believe it. Now, other media people I've talked to, they're like, oh, no, I know that's happened to me or that's happened to people I know. A lot of folks get intimidated like this and they just go away. All I know how to do is fight harder. I get death threats. I start doing videos at 2 a.m. I mean, I, I start working 18, 20 hours a day. Um, I'm like, wow, these people really are criminals. I better do something. I better work harder. And it's my upbringing, it's my instincts, it's my, it's, it's just who I am. I mean, I'm not bragging about it. I'm proud of my ancestors, though. They were all the same way I am. I mean, I'm probably like some, um, some of the more extreme examples. But the point is, I, it doesn't intimidate me. I mean, it, it, it just, I, I am not afraid. I'm afraid of being a buffoon. I'm afraid of stumbling over things. I'm afraid of getting things wrong. I'm afraid of overworking and getting tired and not doing a good job. I'm afraid to look at myself in the mirror. I mean, you know, uh, I'm just doing the best I can. And, and, you, and that resonates with people. For all my warts, as uh, Lord, uh, was it Lord Wellington? No, it was Lord Nelson said, 
you know, you've got to take me warts and all. I know people are resonating with the fact that I'm real. And I just want you to know, this is a big thing we're doing. And uh, they are upset. Look, when they death threat us or they do sophisticated hacks, uh, even against third parties to try to get into our system, uh, when they call up and tell my wife or myself what we were just talking about on the phone to freak us out like, like a movie, that just confirms everything. Okay? And these people are criminals. And the reason they are doing denial of service attacks, the reason they are doing very complex governmental exploits, you know, developed by French companies and others that, that openly only sell to governments, uh, the fact that these are institutional attacks we're having against Infowars.com. And whenever that site's having problems, you can go to PrisonPlanet.com. But make no mistake. What's happening right now is historical. And a lot of people joke and say, you're only one dumb enough to get in this system's face like this. No, no, no. Let it in the ever. I mean, sometimes when I've been death threatened or, or messages are related, it's like, look, do you understand we can kill you? What, you just think I've been doing all this and I didn't know that? You think I'm like you, New World Order. Most of you guys, go join the evil because you think it's the winning team. I cannot join you, okay? It's not even a question of not comparing myself to one of the prophets, but, you know, things historically like this. Ezekiel, they're threatening to kill him because he's getting in the corrupt's faces. And he says to God, he goes, God, they're going to kill me if I keep getting in their faces, but it's burning in my bones. I think that was Ezekiel. And that's what it's like. I, I am not in control of myself, okay? I want everybody to understand that. I cannot give up. I cannot give in. I cannot stop, okay? It is a overriding drive, and it may be ugly sometimes, but it's the best I can do. Okay? And and that's it. But these, these fools think that dirty tricks, death threats, denial of service attacks, sophisticated hacks, all sorts of other crud, uh, cognitive infiltration, COINTELPRO, stuff's going to get to me, saying where I live and saying come kill me, all this kind of crap on the news saying I hope, you know, my hope is kids don't get killed. I think we should kill him. Yeah, we'll do it in a uniform. <laughs> Look, I know you're a bunch of Jerry Sandusky, uh, you know, Jimmy Savelle wannabes, okay? And look, I'm not ever going to bow to you. You understand that? I'm never going to shut up. I'm never going to back down. I'm never going to stop. And to all my critics, hey, I know it, it's ugly sometimes. It is what it is, okay? I'm in the arena. And I'm in the arena with people like State Representative Toth. I'm in the arena with people like Ron Paul. I'm in the arena with people like Matt Drudge. I'm in the arena with people like you that want liberty. I'm never backing down. I signed my John Hancock on the Declaration of Independence 2012, and I'm never backing down, never giving in. You guys have been holding long enough. I appreciate you holding. I just can't believe that so many people are fundamentally scared of this criminal government so then the criminal government wins and takes over. Because we act like sheep, they then win. Instead of acting like men, and America is in a trance, man. Even people that know what's going on, you talk to them, you can't get through to them. It's television watching has turned people into jellyfish. Let's go to George in Texas. George, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Alex, for taking my call. Um, I know there's been a buzz going around the Internet saying January 19th is going to be Gun in Appreciation Day. I'm calling on the audience, uh, let's have a Gun Owners of America membership bomb to let the, send the message that we're not throwing down our weapons. I agree. I mean, I've said I'm not turning my guns in. I'm done. That's why I'm so upset. I've got to sit here as a law-abiding person and tell a criminal government who's exploiting dead children, you're not getting my semi-automatic rifles, you had incredible draconian gun laws in Connecticut, and this happened. They probably staged it. That, that They staged Fast and Furious. That's why I get so angry. Well, I'm just saying Larry Pratt has been, uh, has been uh, on the fight for a long time, even when public opinion was against him. He has held his ground, and I think he needs our support. So I'm saying January 19th, uh, $20 a year, membership. Well, I agree. They've gotten a quarter million new members in the last month. Uh, with the NRA, and the NRA got real milk toast for a while because they were being infiltrated. We put pressure on them. They've gotten a lot better. But, yeah, gun owners of America, 
I mean, I need to ask Larry. They've gotten a lot of new members, but they should have gotten a quarter million new members. And, and you know, we have NRA board members on and stuff like uh, Bob Barr and stuff. I'm not knocking them. I mean, overall, they're getting better. Uh, it's just that, you know, used to, they'd actually, they supported the 68 Gun Control Act that got us into this mess to begin with. Thank you so much, George. Good point. Uh, Bill in North Carolina, you're on the air. Hey, Alex. Thank you for taking my call. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Alex, uh, first off, uh, I pray for you every day. I, I, I love what you're doing. You've been incredible. And uh, the night you went on Pierce Morgan, I think that woke a lot of people up. And, and I, I just want to make a quick point today. Recently, I, I moved from one town in North Carolina to right outside Camp Lejeune. And when I got here, I thought the young Marines were going to be, you know, just cheap. And what I found out, the 19-year-olds, the 20s, the 28-year-olds, they know what's going on. They know about Benghazi. They know about Fast and Furious. They know about the discrepancies in Sandy Hook, and they're going to stand down. The ones I'm talking with, if they go in, they get told to confiscate. They're either going to stand down, they're going to pull out a rank, or they're not going to show up for work. So I think one of the ways people can get on the offense is talk to your people. Call your local sheriffs like I do. Ask their opinion. Find out what they're doing. Call Congressman Stockton. Thank him. Call Sheriff Merrill. Get, because those guys need the prayers and they need people to support them because they're going out on a limb. And we need those guys to be a light out in the open for other representatives and other people in our legal system and sheriffs to follow. Absolutely. I want to get both these sheriffs, one in Kentucky, one in Washington State on. One of them wrote a letter just saying, look, what you're doing is unconstitutional. I'm not going to be part of it. And it, it's got to get to that point. But all this unconstitutional stuff, it's all out of control. And again, when I found that the FBI statistics from the locals was 21% reduction uh, in, in violent crime generally, 49 in crimes with guns, that is the most powerful statistic. And again, I've criticized Fox News in the past, but they were showing the statistic last weekend or, la or late last week. And I went and looked it up and it was a statistic I hadn't seen or heard. And it was, it was compiled from local governments. 49% drop in gun crime. 49%? I mean, and they want our guns and are parading and high-fying and going, you're beautiful children, the family's here, you lost your beautiful children. Like a vampire using the deaths of those kids. I mean, did it make you nauseated to watch that press conference? Alex, disgusting. I, I, I was sitting here chomping at the bit. I'm listening to it, and to exploit those children, it's, it's, it's a psyop. It's disgusting because we, we know, those of us who are awake to, and those of us who have prior military experience know exactly what he's doing and why he's doing it, and, and it's just disgusting to watch. And, and, and one other thing, too, that, that, that I'm seeing, too, is the hypocrisy. A lot of times when I'm talking to the liberals out there, it's a matter of their opinion. It's like, look, guys, it's not about your opinion. These are the impeachable offenses. You're Benghazi, you're Fast and Furious, you're Sandy Hooks. So what you were able to put down in those article impeachments, I'm able to get out to Facebook and share that with my friends and family because it's not a matter of opinion. It's a matter of constitutional doctrine. So keep it up, Alex. I love you. I pray for you and your staff, my brother. You keep, keep on keeping on, brother. Thank you, my friend, as well. And again, folks, if they were real dummies that wanted guns to keep us safe, it wouldn't be as bad. These are mobster gangster crooks that suckered their own people and said, we're not going to raise your taxes, and then massively hammered them. And then almost all the working poor are going down to 29 hours from 40 or 50. I mean, it's so mean. We're on the march. The empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Really hard to do this radio show because really what I want to be doing is going back and getting all their statements and video clips and press conferences where they say what their plan is. And then I can show you, I say 11 or 12 bills. It's like 20 something now they've introduced in Congress, but they're all incredibly nasty. And so no one even knows what the plan is now. It's just, hey, I'm up here with kids high fiving any more kids get killed, it's you gun owners, it's your fault. If you don't do what I want, I'm the good guy. And it's just such a mindless psyop. It's like saying, turn your cars in, or the next time there's a car wreck, it's your fault. I mean, it, it is just, you know, yeah, let's get some audio while he's high-fying. I mean, it, exploiting those little sweetie pies. Man, I tell you, uh, people used to show me photos of their kids when I was young, and I'd be like, why are you showing me photos of your kids? 
now I've got children. People want to show me their wallet full of pictures. I want to see it. You know what I mean? I, I just, it makes me sick whenever people use kids for something. I just love children so much that, because they're little minds ready to be filled with information and for the adventure of life. And then I think of people like Sandusky and Saville and on these globalist scum and the things they do to children, and it makes me sick. It makes me sick. It's like people that want to hurt innocent animals like dogs and cats. I mean, you, you read about people that it's like some fetish where good-looking women beat animals to death, some kind of snuff porn. I mean, it, it's little puppies, kids. With kids, it's like 10 times more angering than puppies. It's like, who are these people? And they're always... These perverts and pedophiles and government types are always real fake and psychopathic and come off like nice guys, but you can see it in their eyes and in their actions. And when Obama talks about those beautiful children that got killed, they always call them beautiful. I mean, what a pervert, man. Okay, I'm going too far what I really think about Obama. That guy is a demonic pervert. He wants to pervert our Constitution. He wants to pervert our republic. He wants to be a Peace Prize winner and launch all these illegal wars. And, and, and the left is just all sick and gets into the death and destruction and all of it. I mean, I'm just sick of them. And Joe Biden is such a gangster. And Rahm Emanuel looks like a cartoon character gangster. I mean, did you see him in that press conference yesterday sweating and looking all nuts? I mean, that guy is crazy. And, and you've got all these, like San Francisco and New York, saying how big your Coca-Cola can be, uh, how big your apartment can be now. Uh, say, I mean, just a bunch of control freaks. They just want to run everybody's lives. They want everybody living in fear, not need of stuff that statistically isn't a threat. If my kids went to public school, I'd be worried about them being beat up by bullies, uh, turning into mindless TV heads, uh, turning into emotional wrecks because a bunch of mean kids telling them they're not cool instead of their minds being filled with science and sports and, and, and discovery. I'd be scared of the state pushing drugs on them. I'd be scared of, the, of, of stuff like that. I wouldn't be scared if my kids went to public school of a mass shooting. 88 people die a year, and last year was a record year. All the other crimes dropping but those, because the media advertises it, of a Sikh temple, a movie theater, a couple schools, 88 people dead. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, that doesn't even register in the top 100 causes of death. But they've got people thinking, we're, we're, I mean, I got news reports pouring out where people see a kid with a Nerf gun in their front yard that sold at Target and Walmart. My kids have probably had 10 of them over the years because they break so easy. I and mean, we were having a Nerf battle this weekend. I mean, you drive through any suburban neighborhood, it's Nerf war. Your car gets shot with Nerf darts. Your, your car gets hit with footballs. I mean, uh, people now see orange and yellow and green Nerf guns, and the police are called, and they lock down the, the area and play along with it. I mean, it is just sick how they are turning us into a bunch of cowards. And believe me, everything Obama said in that press conference is to target. There it is, Nerf gun found after Long Island school lockdown. I mean, there's a bunch of these happening. That whole speech was targeting soccer moms about, here's the sweet kids. We don't want them to get killed. I got some reasonable stuff I'm going to be announcing. Goodbye, goodbye, high five, high five. I got an Obamacare. There's no death panels. No, it doesn't increase your premiums. That's a right-wing lie. Blah, blah. We're like, here it is. Here it is. It's in the bill. But see, they never say it in press conferences. So I have to sit here. You know, that's why I'm getting so angry is this is like Groundhog Day. You ever seen that great uh, movie, uh, Groundhog Day? With Bill Murray. And, you know, he just, I mean, it's the same day over and over again. No matter what he does, he has to relive this day over and over again. And I have to watch people get conned and bamboozled and manipulated and snookered and, 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 and conned over and over and over again. And I know exactly what they're doing. And I'm not even smart. I mean, that was an incredibly exploitive press conference. Biden was trying to hold back a smile the entire time, was literally having a you-know-what dream up there. Obama was trying to act somber and look like the devil. 
All right, I'm, I'm going to stop. Andy in Africa. I didn't know somebody was calling from Africa. Where are you calling us from Africa? I'm calling from Africa, Alex. Welcome. You're on the air. Where are you calling from in Africa? Uh, the good part, the southern part. <laughs> South Africa? That's it. That's right, Alex. Uh, to start out, I just want to say uh, thanks for making people aware of some of the really important issues like gun control. I really like how you've upgraded the show. And uh, hello to all the listeners out there. May Yeshua bless you all. Well, thank you. How do we upgrade the show? Okay, uh, no, just the new graphics and the TV. I've watched your show for about, uh, I've seen your show, uh, we've listened to it for about uh, five, six, seven years now. So well, We're going to keep upgrading, good. but i got to say, CJ and Chris are just upping their games. John Bowne, the, the, the hardest place to work is in here with me because I get in a you know, rampage, and so pray for them as well. They're doing overall a great job. They, they really upped their game, so we're thankful for that. Go ahead, sir. I'll shut up. No worries. No worries, no worries. You mentioned your web servers have been going down. Well, you're not the only one, so to speak. I am a web developer and researcher, and I'm here to tell you that the Illuminati is back online. Breaking news. Now, what do I mean by that? You remember the Illuminati card game, right? Yes. Okay, interesting thing is this card game started out as an online game. Okay? Running on what we would call uh, an Illuminati server, I guess, which was a BBS system. So the game started on a server, and then Steve Jackson's games was raided by the Secret Service, and they confiscated the server and the data that was on that server. The game was never supposed to get out. According to uh, Stephen Dolenz, said to be an ex-Satanist high priest who exposed the game in the prophecy. By the way, show. the maker of the Illuminati card game uh, and the video game developer, he has his offices about two miles from us. We've called him, no exaggeration, probably 40 times. I keep saying when we get time, we're going to go over there. Because, and also, in the past, I know where he lived, because my parents lived close to him in North Austin, and he'd have these weird Halloween parties where he'd let all the neighborhood kids in, run through, like, his castle house. I never went over there, but I read about it in the paper back when I was in high school, actually. That's, we're talking about, like, in 1992. Yeah, his card game predicts everything, and I don't know how they did it. It's, it's bizarre. Well, that's pretty interesting because uh, possibly Stephen Dolenz had insider knowledge being a Satanist high priest. So, uh, so anyhow, uh, Steve Jackson's games, this is where it gets really interesting, Alex. Uh, Steve Jackson games, uh, Prism Net, used to own a domain called io.com, and that's Illuminati Online. Now, this domain name actually led to the creation of the Electronic Frontier Foundation, according to Slashdot.com. And uh, they got their servers back, uh, which they probably weren't supposed to. And the big part of the hacker movement actually is, uh, is the EFF, uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation. Perhaps they could help you guys out. In any case, July 1st, 2011, Richards & Richards sold the domain to an unnamed party. Okay? Now, IO.com has been sold, and it seems perhaps the Illuminati is back online in a big way because IO.com now points to IO data centers. Get this, I.O. is Goldman Sachs' worldwide vendor of choice for advanced data storage. Well, listen, what you got to do is you ought to shoot a YouTube video about this. You ought to write an article about this because it's, it's complex. I'm not following it all. Plus, I don't know if this video game maker is a devil high priest because somebody said so. People said I'm a devil high priest or, a, you know, a ninja warlock because we joked about it once. They actually think that's real now that I'm a Vatican assassin ninja warlock. I mean, it's a joke. Uh, but, yeah, they have some deep knowledge about things for that card game. But, I mean, then people go too far. There's one card looks like myself and, and Ron Paul in it, uh, and so that's proof that we're part of it. Uh, I mean, but but it, it is bizarre. I mean, because I've, I've collected now, uh, well, I haven't collected. Listeners have mailed us the entire set, which is pretty rare, like all, I think it's three or four sets. And you, and you look at this, and it was made like 20 years ago. And uh, you're like, how did they do this? How did they predict all this? The tower's getting blown up. The Pentagon hit just like it got hit. Uh, staging terror. Uh, uh, COINTELPRO. I mean, it's just wow. This guy, this guy really knew what he was talking about. And uh, but he won't, he won't come on the show. So and, and so, it's becoming an issue. Uh, thank you so much. I got to move quick here now. I want to play some of these clips of Obama that David Knight worked to clip out uh, from the disgusting press conference. Uh, Chris in Florida, you're on the air. Welcome. Well, Gun Appreciation Day, that would be January 19th, as the last previous caller mentioned. That was Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s 84th birthday. And, uh, By the way, he went and got a concealed carry permit. He went and was trying to get a gun permit right before they killed him. 
Absolutely, and the deacons of defense who provided security for him from the KKK and other government-sponsored race baiters. But uh, we need to demand an apology from our government. Of course, you know about the 1999 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. family's uh, uh, court case that's at the KingCenter.org by unanimous jury decision that his assassination was a conspiracy by state, local, and federal officials. And this was uh, after expert testimony, 70 witnesses, uh, uh, and uh, the civil trial in Memphis. Tennessee, unanimous decision on uh, December 8, 1999, after about an hour of deliberation. So uh, that's one point I want to mention, and also uh, the FDA or the uh, FDA has their adverse event reporting system on uh, 31 drugs that are disproportionately linked with reports of violent behavior towards others. Now we have a two-year-old two uh, Time Magazine article that lists the top 10, that's entitled Top 10 Illegal Drugs Linked to Violence, and four of which are fluorinated. That would be Prozac, Luvox, Effexor, and Paxil. Next, I would like to also mention that uh, Piers Morgan is in violation, subject to uh, life sentence or death penalty, for his death threat against you, Alex. Title 18, Section 241 and 242. That would also include those co-conspirators on the air, Buzz Buzzinger, sports columnist of the Daily Beast, and Abby Huntsman of the Huffington Post. They have uh, not redra redacted their conspiracy against you, Alex, and that's something that ought to be harped on. Joyce's, Joyce Riley's show this morning was also very good on uh, the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. She spent two hours with a private investigator, so check out the Power Hour, and uh, that, that's a lot of awesome research. All right, buddy. I, I really appreciate your call. That's a lot of info. Boy, my head wasn't spinning. It is now. Here's the breaking news. Document cam, please. Now is the time. The president's plan to protect our children and our communities by reducing gun violence. And Aaron Dykes, since this came out about 30 minutes ago, he and... David Knight, both crack researchers, have gone over it and indexed it. It is exactly what they already claimed they were going to do. It is create total gun hysteria, tie it to insurance. To get insurance, you'll have to have police brainwashing, uh, active shooter drills, but, but never wear your arm to protect yourself, to teach you how to go lay in a corner uh, so the executioner can kill you uh, a little bit more easily. The BBC has called my phone, no exaggeration. 30, 40 times today. I'm going to take this right now. Hello, is this the BBC? ITV. Uh, what, what is that? That's out of Canada, right? Ma'am, ma'am, I lost my phone and, and I never put the voicemail back on it. Just, just do me a favor. I'm going to be off the air in about 15 minutes or so. Why don't you text this? Yeah, well, just exactly. Just text this number, your name and number, and I'll, I'll, I or somebody will get back with you, okay? Thank you. Just rings nonstop. Every TV station you can imagine. I'm not even. I should be doing all these interviews, but I'm just too burnt out, man. And, and, and another thing is, I get on these TV shows. And I just want to blow up at them because I know we got mafia running things. People are in a, tr in a in a in a trance, and the whole system wants us to just play along and just be real calm about it. And then we need to be calm. No, the time for being calm is over. We got into this situation by being calm. I've intellectually been calm. I've analyzed the data. These people are criminals. I'm done with them. <sighs> Excuse me. Now, the, the, the irritating thing is I was doing radio interviews driving in this morning, and TV stations would not stop calling it where I couldn't even do the radio interviews. In fact, our, I was on one of our, uh, I was on our 50,000 watt uh, KMJ, and, and they literally literally called 15 times while I was on that 10 minute interview where the interview was worthless. My wife's like, well, you got to put the do not disturb on here, which I don't remember to do. I'm not complaining on air. I didn't answer the phone to act powerful. I'm just said that I've been angry about this because they've been calling. <sighs> See, I'm angry. I shouldn't have guns. I, I'm angry. I'm angry. You wouldn't have a country if your forebearers weren't angry. By the way, the reason we've had so much wealth, we haven't been perfect. We've been had our own problems. But the reason we've had so much wealth is because we didn't let thugs get in control of us and turn us into the, the other slaves, okay? Our ancestors wouldn't put up with anybody's garbage, and so there was a lot of private independent operators, and a free market got developed, and we all got super rich. Now we've gotten super decadent, we got taken over, now we're going to get super poor again. Because despots make everybody poor on purpose. Plus, they screw everything up, but they don't care because they got theirs. Anyways, uh, they have analyzed it, and it is it is use the health care law 
to force everybody to pay for anti-gun training and anti-gun brainwashing. So it's going to be an anti-gun tax in Obamacare because Obamacare is written where they can do whatever they want. That's probably the biggest thing here. Turn the doctors into spies, uh, have, a, have a national demonization campaign run by Holder, uh, national dialogue, uh, talking about just putting people on lists without any proof that they can't own guns, uh, banning all private sales, physically banning uh, semi-autos and handguns if they can get it legislatively, uh, arresting anybody that sells a gun to a neighbor, claiming all your guns retroactively have to prove where you got them. Uh, they want you to have to come in and re-register them. Active uh, shooter training everywhere to create more hype about mass shooting so all these mentally ill people just get told about mass shooting and shown how to do it all day. It's like the D.A.R.E. program it proved made kids use more drugs. because but the, it's, it's like sex ed. I remember sitting there in like seventh grade during sex ed, and they're sitting there talking about sex, and I'm looking over at the cheerleader next to me. You know, she's looking over at me. <laughs> just like, I mean, the point is it makes everybody go have sex, folks. Well, it's the same thing here. you got to tell the mentally ill people. You know, hey, want to go out with a bang? Go to a school, shoot some people. Uh, model emergency response, FEMA involved. They want churches, campuses, everything to be brainwashed. Uh, they're going to try to force gun manufacturers to put biometrics on all the guns. Um, they want high school resource anti-gun brainwashing officers who aren't armed. But if they are to be armed, they're going to be federal people in the schools turning it into a prison and a tattletale squad. And this is how they totally, just like they converted the airports into police state zones off of some staged events, they're doing the same thing here. All right, we'll be back with more of your calls. Stay with us. I've got to go over the Obama speech. We've got all the clips. We're going to go into overdrive here today. And we've got all these callers that are holding, like Mike in Texas and so many others. And we will take a ton of your calls uh, in the next hour. And, of course, InfoWars Nightly News tonight is going to have uh, my good friend and gun dealer, and New American Magazine researcher and writer uh, Bob Dacey is going to be here analyzing it. This is all about the U.N. treaty coming up. And Aaron Dykes was just showing me more. It's, it's really bad. They're going to just have health and human services. If you're handicapped, you're not going to be able to have a gun. The what I just read, and, and it's directly from Health and Human Services. during. The, that's why it's hard to do the show right now, because I'm out there reading stuff during the breaks, and then it's just overwhelming. It looks like they're going to try to take handicapped people's weapons, not even mentally handicapped. I mean, it's just, it's, it, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And then they're just going to pick and choose gun owners to come harass and SWAT team and stuff. And then just have a huge unending brainwashing campaign, like the Attorney General said, against guns. All I know is we've got to get aggressive, have national days where we have our guns out in public. They hate that because they like to have TV act like guns are already illegal. We've been fighting back, and we've got good sheriffs, good police that are servants that, by the way, I notice are dressed like police and not army commandos. You can always see the good cops, you know, are dressed like dignified, you know, uh, public servants and not like goons. But side issue, uh, may, I, I was on a Porter Stansbury's radio show this morning, and uh, he lives in Miami during, um, during the uh, winter. Not a bad idea. Beautiful. And uh, <laughs> my allergies are so bad from the cedar during the winter. I'm thinking about going to Miami or something for three months out of the year and remoting into the office because of these cedar allergies. But the point is, uh, is that he, he said, yeah, I really like the cops around here. They dress, you know, in just nice, you know, conservative outfits. They're real nice. He goes, I came down now. They're like Darth Vader cars, Darth Vader outfits. They pull over families and get their shotguns out when they walk up. And he, he doesn't even know if he wants to stay there anymore. I mean, it's just, that's one thing I got to say for Arde Saveda. He's tried to put the police back in old-fashioned police uniforms and old-fashioned police cars and uh, have them act like old-fashioned cops. I mean, can't we just have that? Can, do we have to have people playing Rambo all day and then, and, and then acting like we're the enemy? A military fights an enemy. I don't want my police to look like a military. I want my military to look like a military. And I don't want my military operating domestically. But support the broadcast, get the Propure water filters, 10% off the promo code WATER. They're the best side-by-side -side comparison against the leading competitors available at InfoWarsShop.com. And we've got more of these in now. We've been selling hundreds of these a day, and that helps get the word out and fund the operation. The Come and Take It new T-shirts are out with an AK-47 with the Second Amendment printed inside the AK-47. The best seller. 
1995, available at InfoWarsStore.com. So you support the broadcast and you support the Second Amendment at the same time. Okay, let's uh, let's just go to calls next hour because I don't want to go to somebody and cut them off short. Uh, Mike and Antoine and Craig and Jim and Joseph and everybody else, the toll-free number to join us, 800-259-9231. And just have your point ready and we'll try to go to the next person. Uh, as best I can. Again, my head is spinning right now. Uh, Aaron Dykes and the entire team are in there. Uh, Steve Watson, Paul Watson, Don Salazar, Kurt Nemo, Mike Adams is basically an unofficial member of the team, uh, hammering through this. And it's all nebulous, but we got them because it, with each thing they've called for, nebulous, we have previous policy and bills they've introduced by the very people on this board in some cases. We know their attack profile. You already know what it is. Register, confiscate, shut down ammo manufacturers, harass gun dealers, harass gun manufacturers, sue gun manufacturers, ban importation, put you on no buy list with no proof for no reason, SWAT team and harass gun owners, demonize gun ownership everywhere. Unbelievable. Folks, if you go up to Infowars.com, it's been up and down today under a coordinated denial of service attack, the biggest we've ever seen. Does it matter? We'll just start even more backup websites. Our listeners will just get the impeachment articles out to even more people. Get them out to every member of Congress. I'll talk about it after we take calls. And I got some clips of the president we're going to analyze coming up here. But it's the same thing with Obamacare. Left it nebulous, and now he's just going to do whatever he wants. Uh, and uh, they are licking their chops. I mean, they know there's going to be another mass shooting with all this media hype, guaranteed. And it's just a matter of time. And, and if they're written, they'll stage one. And like Larry Pratt said, you notice the media won't attack Larry Pratt for that. They tried and dropped it. Remember Larry Pratt, after Aurora, he said on my show and others, and it made national news, but then they backed off. Oh, Larry Pratt says the government could have staged this. What he said was, if they staged Fast and Furious, they could have staged this. Ladies and gentlemen, they're the prime suspects. And then each event has so many earmarks. <laughs> It'd be like if you were a cop and you're driving by a bank and you see guys running out with masks on and, and bags over their shoulders and guns in their belts. I mean, that's probable cause. That's, that's, that's their, their bank robbers. I mean, if they don't stop, you can shoot them. I, I mean, it's the same deal. I mean, they have done this stuff before. They stand to gain from it. And all the, the, the anomalies and the things involved, I don't just say this because I want to think this, it's, it's, it's overwhelming, and I haven't even been touching it a lot. People are mad at me. Because people are like, yeah, this is blaringly staged. Yeah, of course it's staged. Of course it's staged. There's some real mass school shootings, but these things, you get a mental patient in there, you shoot them, you have organized crime, shoot some kids, they get out. Even if they get caught, you know, the feds say, let them go, and, and then you just change the story around. And I haven't even gotten into homes. I mean, that that is incredible. Mike in Texas, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Guns and Obama, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Uh, my family and I are praying for you. You're doing the yeoman's job there. Uh, I hope that uh, I hope nothing happens. Uh, I hope everything stays. Well, peaceful. listen, I only whine about it and I've gotten my will re redone and stuff because there is a chance they may set me up or do something. I'm just letting people know this is real. That's I'm not putting it out there, ooh, the show's spooky, and oh, man. I mean, these are criminals, and, and a lot of people aren't fighting them because they know they're criminals, and I'm just saying let's just get this out in the open. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, well, you know, we are the cops out in front of the bank, and these guys are the robbers. They just ran out. They got the masks on. They got the guns, and they're saying, hey, you know, we'll just go ahead and gaslight these people and say, hey, turn over your guns. You can't get us. We just robbed the bank. You can't do anything about it. But the the one thing I called in about is, you know, they, they, Obama sounds real reasonable to the soccer moms and, and to everybody that wants to obey the law and has empathy for the, the parents of the children that were killed and, and all of that. Everything he, he says is real reasonable. The only problem is, you know, he works for us and... And he wants a background check so that we can have our guns. What about he's working for us? We need a background check on him. He has access to weapons of mass destruction. He has access to um, 
predator drone. Exactly. He won't release any of his college records. He won't release any of it. He's got multiple names on record. He's in college magazines under other names. We don't know who this guy is. For all I know, he could be a robot. I mean, I'm, I'm joking when I say that, but I mean, he is Mr. Mystery. That's why more and more I'm getting freaked out by him. I mean, I, uh, oh, man, I tell you, I got, we're in trouble. That's all I can tell you. Yeah, why are we putting up with this? I mean, you know, this is this is the thing that should be put out there. Uh, you know, we he's never gone through a background check here. You know, uh, we know he's bad. No, it's true. In uh, fact, they've had news articles saying to work at the post office, you'd have to have more of a background check than Obama's had. And that's, that's that's why they've got him in there is because who knows who he really is? Barry Sotero. Who knows who his dad really is? Uh, all these other names. I mean, he's got at least three different names that have been his name on record. We'll be right back. All right, it's official. We're trying to get the full text of all of them. We're live here at 208 Central. Obama signs 23 executive orders to curb gun violence, urges Congress to act. And we're going to be going over all of this and playing some of the clips and then going back to your phone calls. The latest is all up at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. We'll have a lot more tonight, 7 o'clock Central, uh, for the Infowars Nightly News at InfoWarsNews.com. Now, if you go up to Infowars.com, it's scrolled down to the bottom of the featured news area. It's Citizens File Articles of Impeachment Against Obama. And again, most people get it. Some are saying, well, well, how do you file that? I'm publicly putting out with links to the lawyers and congressmen and women's statements and, and, and with the text of the Constitution where Obama is clearly violating Article 1, Section 9. And I just go on and on and on, showing all the high crimes and misdemeanors and what Congress is to do. And I think I'll go in there and add some statements uh, as well and show some more of the Constitution at the bottom of the article. Then I have a video breaking it down uh, there. But citizens file articles of impeachment against Obama. Where you really want to go is DrudgeReport.com. That's where I go. And if you go there, it's got all the latest, too, uh, as it's breaking. But the, the ammo shortages are so bad because the citizens buying ammo. And now you know why Homeland Security bought 1.6 billion bullets more than they'd use for target practice in a decade. That's 1.6 billion bullets. That's enough bullets to shoot every person in America more than four times. Uh, hollow points, you know, 223, 308, hollow point 40. They did all this because they knew this was coming. And Obama's on record. Th th that's the thing I get so mad about. They all admit they've always wanted total abolition of our guns. The UN treaty pushes that. The civilian abolition, the, civ the abolition of civilian ownership of firearms, because civilian ownership of firearms threatens a legitimate power monopoly of the state. That's a quote from Unadir and the treaty in July 7th, 2001. And it's the same treaty today. They've just added to it. This is their goal. Don't say it's about the dead kids. It's about domination. Because every country where they take the guns, the cops are running around in black masks with machine guns and torturing people and arresting everybody in giant prisons, okay? We know what this is about. Let's start going to some of these clips, and we'll have more of these on the nightly news tonight. Jakari Jackson's doing it, but undoubtedly I'll do some special reports as well. Because as soon as the broadcast is over, I'm going to put my head in all this and come up with some statements. It's exactly what we thought, but even bigger. They're going to swarm us with our own tax money to take our guns at every level. They're going to make the entire Homeland Security hysteria and fear about guns. They're trying to kill the gun culture. And I got news for you. It's going to backfire. Currently, there's going to be more mass shootings, though. That's why they're so confident. They've got something really nasty planned. Like Fast and Furious was to blame the Second Amendment. Thousands of dead Mexicans conservatively. Hundreds of dead Americans conservatively. Five dead law enforcement conservatively on our side. Hundreds on their side. Thousands of citizens, civilians as we're called. These are cold-blooded mafia dons. I mean, Obama admits he signs death orders, what is every Tuesday, for hundreds of drone strikes. Because it's okay when he does, even though it violates international law. In all these countries we're not even at war with, that Congress hasn't authorized, and they'll blow up an entire apartment building to get one bad guy, they say. And it's like, well, that's collateral damage. Yeah, dead kids. Doesn't he can go out, play golf, smoke cigarettes, drink whiskey, you know, what Obama does. I mean, 
this is disgusting exploitation. And the high fine makes me want to throw up. Drudge has a photo of that up on his site. We can play it here for viewers. But radio listeners, we've got it linked up at InfoWars.com as well. Yeah, yeah, there's the clapping and all of it. Uh, here's the first clip. Universal background checks. Okay, uh, Obama, we're going to go to the clip uh, 11 minutes into his speech. He says 40% not checked. Yeah, when you sell it to your neighbor or they sell it to you. I mean, criminals are always going to get guns. They bust cops all the time selling guns they've gotten in buybacks. So here's the universal background uh, check comment by Obama. First, it's time for Congress to require a universal background check for anyone trying to buy a gun. The law already requires licensed gun dealers to run background checks, and over the last 14 years, that's kept 1.5 million of the wrong people from getting their hands on a gun. All right, that's enough. But it's hard uh, to enforce yeah, that Yeah, but law uh, Adam Lanza, your patsy... ...of all gun purchases are conducted... Yeah, that's good. I'm going to go back to the air. Uh, Adam Lanza, uh, your, uh, your uh, patsy... I guess they're so used to me in the first hour talking over him, I'm doing it again. I guess you're right. Uh, Adam Lanza, uh, the uh, patsy, or whoever he is, the, the, the whacked out of his mind, the cover of a Hollywood movie about mind control, same look in all these guys' eyes, on psychotropics, under psychiatric care. They fought like a devil to keep that from coming out, but his family's on record now. He tried to buy a gun five times and couldn't get one. I mean, obviously, you go in a gun shop, plus his mental illness was in the health record. It got filed. And he looked like he was whacked out of his brain. I, I've been at gun shows with private dealers, you know, somebody selling off their collection. They don't sell to people that look like they're illegal aliens. They don't sell to people that don't. They'll talk to you before they sell you a gun. And so what if you're a felon? Most felons were innocent. Or, or who's to say if somebody did a white-collar crime 20 years ago, they can't have a gun to protect themselves? I got, look, here's the deal. You try to take somebody's guns, they're going to try to take your guns. It's real simple. In the old days, when you got let out of prison, if you were arrested with a gun that you legally owned, your gun until the 50s in most states was given back to you. Here's your shotgun you were arrested with that you bought down at Sears and Roebuck. Don't try to use that illegally because people got it. A criminal's going to get a gun anyways. And I understand it's a way to put criminals back in jail if you catch them with guns again. Look, all that should be in prison is violent offenders and white-collar criminals, and you shouldn't be getting out. There was a lot less crime in this country back in the 30s and 40s and things, when if you did a robbery or something, you're going to be in jail for 10 years, busting rocks. Now, now it's like a college of criminal activity. Let's go ahead and go to a Second Amendment right of individuals to own for sport, hunting, protection, and collection. Notice he had to stick protection in there. But how am I going to protect myself from six or seven gangbangers if I don't have a semi-auto? And we've seen those countless videos of short store owners and others. So this is Obama's version of the Second Amendment. Here it is. Like most Americans, I believe the Second Amendment guarantees an individual right to bear arms. I respect our strong tradition of gun ownership and the rights of hunters and sportsmen. There are millions of responsible, law-abiding gun owners in America who cherish their right to bear arms for hunting or sport or protection or collection. Like most Americans, I believe the Second Amendment guarantees an individual right to bear arms. Hit pause for a moment. I respect our strong... The crew was asking me where was the smiling... There it was right there. I, I, I only watched about half of it because I was busy talking over it. And I, and I turned it off a few times because I couldn't listen to it. Just while I was watching the continued smirking. You know, it's like when you get caught doing something bad and it's funny. And your dad's going, I know you did it. I know, you know, you know don't lie. And you're going, <laughs> you know, and, and it's like funny. I mean, th this guy could not get the you-know-what-eating grin off his face. And, and, and the crew was asking me where it's at. I, I saw it like five, six times in just half of it I've watched. But, I mean, th there it is. Let's roll that again. Here it is. Guarantees an individual right to bear arms. I respect our strong tradition of gun ownership. Do you see him hold the, hold the smile down? And the rights of hunters and sportsmen. He is so happy he had to fight. There are millions of responsible, law-abiding gun owners in America who cherish their right to bear arms for hunting or sport or protection or collection. There is another smile. I mean, this is insane. And then he goes on to say at the 1554 clip, 
I want to play that one. He says, uh, we can respect the Second Amendment while keeping an irresponsible, law-breaking few from inflicting harm on a massive scale. Yeah, by arming people in the school. The government has psychological profiles to know who's steadfast, who's always been to work on time, generally who's got a military-style background or an Eagle Scout, people that are into duty. I mean, I'll tell you who you arm. You arm the football coaches. I mean, it, this is a no-brainer. You arm honorable people. Obviously, the weird uh, science teacher, you know, who everybody knows is a perv or whatever, uh, and, uh, you know, as a, and you give them a psychological evaluation. I mean, I'm all for that just because, you know, you might end up getting a crazy someday as a teacher that kills people. Plus, the kids are so out of control. Who knows what will happen? You're getting assaulted. My point is, do psychological profiling high, and, and, and arm the teachers. Or have retired cops who want to work as janitors. Believe me, they would come and be happy to sweep the floors be undercover and, and protect kids and, and put a couple of retired cops in every school. I mean, I, I bet you get cops that would do it for free, but you don't want to do that. You want to just pay them. I mean, this is a no brainer, but I don't want the police in there doing the anti-drug stuff and harassing people and things. Dealing with bullies, things like that's fine, but I guarantee you, they're saying they're going to have federal police in there. We're going to skip this break coming up. I guarantee you, they're going to just turn this into a federal brainwashing, federal spying, federal anti-gun officers, which is actually what they're proposing. Instead of arm the teachers, and if the schools are too cowardly to do that, like Texas and other states are doing. You know, I had that state superintendent on from that, that uh, Texas town where they're 30 minutes from the local police department, but it's a big school out in the country. And he said, you know, we saw mass shootings in 2007, and we're not going to wait 30 minutes. And we're not going to have our teachers illegally carrying guns and principals. So we have people that have concealed carry that we do some private training with the police and uh, some building clearing style stuff. See, but the feds don't want that. They want mass shooting training where you go get in a ball. And in every mass shooting, a teacher finally knocks the window out and tries to claw out the burglar bars to go out the window. I mean, if, if you hear boom, boom, boom shooting, it should be... If you really wanted to be serious for something that's still very rare, you would have the, the uh, a, a, you know, collapsible stairs, a stepladder that was right there, and you'd open it and make sure the windows were openable from the inside to go out the window. We're skipping the break. I mean, it is just amazing, absolutely amazing what's going on here. I, I, I mean, I mean, they used to tell people, if you hear a nuclear, you know, bomb uh, sirens go off, get under your desk. And it was just all about creating fear. But at least with that, the ceiling might fall on you. That actually might protect you. There was some reality there, even though it was done for fear mongering. That was later declassified. Getting in a ball when someone's coming to kill you is the last thing you want to do. You've seen that lawyer where the guy's trying to kill him and, and the lawyer's dodging and he's getting shot in the arms, but he still gets all the way up on him and then hides behind a tree. I, I mean, if you're cornered, you're better to fight than just sit there and, and, and be a sitting duck. I thought that was Remo Williams. Remember that movie, Remo Williams, a pretty good B movie where the uh, guy, yeah, 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 Fred Ward, where the guy, where the, uh, uh, karate master knows how to dodge bullets. <laughs> You've seen that footage of the lawyer. He dodges a bunch of them. That guy's got a revolver, and he's, like, dodging it. I mean, if somebody pulls a gun on me and I don't have a gun, that's what's going to happen is that I'm going to dodge them. And, and, and if somebody came into my house and I was couldn't get to a gun or a restaurant, I, I guarantee you, without thinking, I would go throw myself at them, just like Susanna Hupp's dad did in that Luby saving a bunch of people. Not because I'm a hero, folks. You couldn't control me. And I just don't know how we've gotten to the point where a lot of people just kneel down. Oh, you're shooting people? And they just, oh, you're shooting them in a row? Let me just get ready and put my head down. Oh, let me put my head down while you shoot me. I mean, where is the survival instinct? Every mammal I know. I remember I was about five, six years old. My grandmother uh, had these mouse traps out for mice and rats out in the country. They were getting in the house. And I never even told him about the story because it didn't really even break the flesh, like partially did. I was like three, four, five. I don't remember how old I was. I was real little. And it was on the back porch, and there was a bucket, and there was a rat in it. It had fallen in the bucket. It was trying to get out. And I wanted to be nice and help him get out. And I reached in there, and that rat bit me. 
uh, one time a honeybee was in the baby pool, and, and I wanted to save it, and it stung me, and I really cried. My dad said, oh, it was one of my first memories. I was about two and a half because I wanted to help the bee, and it, it, it stung me. I didn't know why it was mean to me. But the point is, is that a rat will bite you, a raccoon will bite you, a dog will bite you, a seal will bite you, a woodchuck will bite you, a otter will bite you, a wildcat will bite you, a puma will bite you, a cow will bite you and headbutt you, every, uh, a bunny rabbit will bite you, a deer will bite and kick you, every mammal fights back, it's automatic if you're cornered. And they're trying to take our basic instinct of defending ourselves away. And that's why they hate the gun culture, because it's helping us redevelop and rediscover that. Let's go to this bizarre 1647 clip. Pundits saying it's all about all out assault by tyrants on liberty. Uh, let's go to uh, Obama responding to his critics. Here it is. This will be difficult. There will be pundits and politicians and special interest lobbyists publicly warning of a tyr tyrannical, all-out assault on liberty. Not because that's true, but because they want to gin up fear or higher ratings or revenue for themselves. Oh, I wonder who you're talking about, punk. And behind the scenes, they'll do everything they can to block any common sense reform and make sure nothing changes whatsoever. Oh, yeah. The only way we will be able to change is if their audience, their constituents, their members. Right, let's stop right there. Says what? Uh, th th that is a profound statement. And he's thinking about Alex Jones. He's thinking about Matt Drudge. He's thinking about Glenn Beck. He's thinking about Larry Pratt, Wayne LaPierre. I mean, guaranteed, because the White House has responded to me before. And it's come out that Homeland Security's got files on Matt Drudge and Alex Jones and all this stuff. And there's been lawsuits over, but they won't release them by InfraGuard, uh, that's board member uh, of the NRA, Bob Barr, former congressman. I mean, they're talking about us. because like, That's incredible. While they're up there, they know we know they're crooks. I mean, th these people shipped. 20,000 plus guns into Mexico, not the gun dealers allowing guns to walk under ATF orders. That's just the, the least of it. So the media focused on that to divert. They shipped hand grenades. They had the U.S. Army get weapons down there, 18 wheelers, rocket launchers to try to just wreck Mexico so they could then say there's a bunch of U.S. guns doing it to blame our Second Amendment. And again, that all came out. You know how gangster that is? That is a false flag. And they're doing the same thing right now. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Again, I didn't watch that full speech, and I was only reading these quotes. That was a stunning quote. We're going to do overdrive the whole hour. Guys, uh, back that back up for me if you can. And I know you moved to the next clip. I want to go back to 1647. That is just stunning. And you can see him holding back his mafia smirk. Hey, that good fella business Biden might work for you in New York and Chicago and places, okay? Nothing against New Yorkers or Chicagoans. They're great people, but because they've been such wealthy areas, the criminals all ran there and they've run your areas for 100 years. I mean, all that good fella crud and your, and your shark skin suits and all that may intimidate people. And, and, you know, you may think it's funny to sit there with your, I mean, they look like Robert De Niro in Goodfellas. Great Martin Scorsese movie. I watched it again, a true story, with my wife Saturday night. And that same fake confidence makes my blood literally boil. And they cannot stand the fact that I got up there and said, you want to take our guns, you want to enslave us. And that was the number one story in the country for two days. They were talking about Alex Jones First and foremost, that's why we need your prayers, because they go, oh, you're discredited. You, you're yelling at us. You're calling us criminals. That's not a real debate. You're not a real person having a real debate. You're not like my neighbor coming over and going, hey, we, ought to, we, uh, we don't have enough land to have an agriculture exemption, but if we combine together and get an agriculture exemption, we can get off on our taxes. Uh, you know, if we put honeybees on it or maybe a cow or two, uh, how's that sound? You, you want to do that? Man, that's a really good idea. Yeah, that'll lower our taxes massively. You know, I've been so busy, I really haven't had time to go, you know, talk to you. I'm glad you reached out to do that. Yeah, let's do that. 
I waited so long, the neighbor went ahead and just bought some more properties they could do it, but they're still nice enough. I'm going to talk to them to let me merge in with them. But the point is, that's a negotiation. That's a good faith. You know, talking to my neighbor. Hey, how you doing there, uh, Jesse? or whoever the neighbor is, how are you doing today? Let's talk about, you, you, as regular people, nice, calm voices. Hey, come on in and have a cup of coffee. When somebody is a known liar telling me they don't want my guns when they're sworn to get them, and they're a bunch of crooks that, that, that cause mass murder in Mexico and the U.S. Southwest to blame the Second Amendment and scapegoat gun owners and use a bunch of dead Mexican kids. You know, Mexico has press conferences. Calderon did it. we got to do a piece on that. He got a bunch of Mexican kids around him and said, America, we ban your guns. It's your fault. I mean, it's the most ridiculous script. And the White House did it. And the guy that did it, killing thousands of people and hundreds of children, is trying to blame you and I for it, and then we get angry, and they go, oh, you're discredited. And then only the sheep go, oh, yeah, you're discredited when you get angry. But when they go have rallies with Cuomo and uh, gangsters like uh, the godfather of Chicago, Emmanuel, they start going, we're going to do it, yeah, yeah, we're going to get the guns. But with us, oh, no, don't get excited. <laughs> Hold on, you just sit right there, and you take a deep breath, and you calm down, or you're discredited, okay? But you notice the, the president in his press conference, what did he say? He said, there are going to be people saying this is tyranny. There are going to be people saying the government's evil. And he does this little gangster satisfaction. He goes, he's not even a good liar now. He goes, and they're lying. Mm, they're wrong. Mm. <laughs> I mean, that is the most incredible thing. The president of the United States is directly responding to us. There's no doubt, no doubt and I've entered this insane vortex where I've got all these pundits on. And they're saying, yeah, Alex, you're pretty much the most prominent voice now. I, I didn't even want that. I mean, this is Creepville on steroids. Because let me tell you, I'm a macho guy and I don't like tyrants, but I got to be honest. It is creepy to have the president responding to you. And let me tell you, they're thinking about a group of people there, but right in the middle is me. I mean, he's thinking about a group of people. And because it's come out that we're in their their, their internal stuff. Uh, but I mean, it's just unbelievable. That criminal now responding to me. We're on the Echo Dungeon Keepers really like is putting innocent people in jails. You know, when freedom fails, the best men rot in filthy jails. And those that cry to peas of peas are hung by those they tried to please. I'm not afraid of dying. I don't want to be locked up in one of their dungeons, man. They ever locked me up in one of their dungeons. I'm innocent. Get me out. <laughs> oh, man. Again, I hadn't seen the whole speech. I, I was reading over the transcripts, and now we're playing clips of it. And the whole crew said they were back there having lunch. Well, part of the crew, uh, the TV crew, they said, oh, no, we knew they were talking about you because obviously I came out saying it's tyranny. It's a takeover. Last week, that was the big story. The White House responded uh, at the end of Piers Morgan to my petition and denied it as if they could have ever deported him because I asked anyways. We were just showing how your whole petition's a fraud anyways. You're not a dictator. You're trying to be one. Any country where you give a petition to the president and they can do whatever they want, that's not called a president. It's called a dictator. And by the way, Rand Paul, two congressmen, more congressmen, they're calling him a dictator, a king. They're talking about impeachment, and they're talking about how they're going to impeach him. Let's go. It's not, hey, if you keep pushing, we're going to impeach you. We've got a grandstander up there telling us it's our fault when more kids get killed when they're the ones trying to block armed guards in the schools. Remember that. And he's trying to get the people organized to overthrow their own Bill of Rights and Constitution. That is sedition. He is trying to turn all of our cities into crime-ridden uh, mafia don areas like he controls, and we don't want any part of it. White House now requires... We, the people, petitions to have 100,000 signatures for official response. Yeah, well, they responded to the states' rights ones that had hundreds of thousands. And he said, no, there are no states. I am your supreme leader. All right, I want to go to your phone calls, but let's play this clip again. Pundits saying it's all about assault by tyrants. I mean, Obama brought in unconstitutional Obamacare openly... Hey, guys, will you come? Hold on one second, man. Will you come, uh, guys, talk to this Canadian TV thing as I'm doing overdrive and just set me up for Skype? Ma'am, hold on one second. Here you go. 
I mean, they just all have gotten my cell phone number somehow. They're just calling and calling, and, the, and, 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 and BBC's on there, too. And then Good Morning America's on there. I never even told you this morning about it. So I got to deal with that. I got to get more producers, more people. They're working hard in there. There's just too much going on. What was I getting into? Um, I told... Oh, yeah, pundits. We're going to play pundits. I know there's going to be idiots on YouTube in places that, you know, that aren't listening to the radio or not watching us on PrisonPlanet.tv. Look at this crazy guy. He says the White House is responding to him. They responded to my petition and said they were watching Piers Morgan. Jay Carney did. That's the White House press secretary. Myself, Matt Drudge, and others have come out that Homeland Security has files on us just for our covering the TSA. Big Sis has responded and talked about Matt Drudge. The White House has. We have the, the, the tens of millions of, of, of listeners and viewers and readers. Piers Morgan has half a million until I went on his show and went up to a million. And then tens of millions because it was aired everywhere else. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's an illusion. That the president is a nobody punk. He's not our president. And then they try this, just because you're racist. Folks, if there was a black guy that was like George Washington, I'd wash his feet. I, I'm so sick of what color people are. I don't care about their hearts and their minds, the character of their deeds. And I'm sick of these racists standing behind race. They're not even racist, though. They use it to manipulate. And Obama is a clear and present danger to this republic. And I'm saying second American revolution, peaceful secession. Boom, people are listening. I'm saying it's time to impeach his butt, okay? And he's responding to us, and they are hacking our site and doing every dirty trick you can imagine. So we need people to help us. Uh, you know, if they bring InfoWars, InfoWars.com down, it doesn't matter. We'll just set up alternate backup sites, and we'll get our news out one way or the other. You're not going to stop any of us, okay? Uh, but if these are sophisticated, obviously governmental things going on. I'm not going to get into the nature of them. In case others want to piggyback on the exploitations, but it is not fun. And uh, we, have, we have people up 24 hours a day. And we're going to put more on the job. It'll just make us stronger by the grace of God. Uh, but they're mad because no one will call them what they are. Low down gangster thug criminals and waging war against our Bill of Rights and Constitution. Putting us under you in command. Passing Obamacare. Raising taxes on poor people. Man, I tell you, that, that, that makes me this, these, these helpless, sad. A lot of people laugh at these Obama noise, and I've done it to myself because it's funny. It, you know, it's funny because they sound funny. I told the Obama lady, I said, you sound like a Muppet. I said, I have laughed at you, but I care about you as a human. I, I don't know if I should laugh or cry. And, and then I showed her how he lied and said he wouldn't raise taxes and how he lied and you know, said he wouldn't come up with a gun. She goes, wow, I never saw that. He is a liar. And, and my whole point is, I want her to have a future. I want her to have a country. I want her to be free. I, I, I care about her soul, her mind. And the media just says, no, you're racist if you don't vote for Obama. I mean, it's just such a dumbed down. How obvious does it have to get? Here's the kids. I'm high fine. I'm going to get the guns for you kids. The kids said, you're against the little five-year-old if you don't give me my guns. But I'm not. I'm not a tyrant. There's no tyranny. There's nothing wrong going on anywhere. I mean, this is insane. They are attacking me and, and, and others because we're aggressive. And they want to just normalize all this tyranny. Let's go to this clip one more time. Here it is. This will be difficult. There will be pundits and politicians and special interest lobbyists publicly warning of a tyr tyrannical all-out assault on liberty. Not because that's true, but because they want to gin up fear or higher ratings or revenue for themselves. And behind the scenes, they'll do everything they can to block any common sense reform and make uh -huh. sure nothing changes whatsoever. Uh -huh. No, that's not true. Uh, uh the only way we will be able to change is if their audience, their constituents, their membership says this time must be different. This and, and that's what they call it. Now is the time in his executive orders that are now out. <sighs> Up there with those dead kids trying to blame gun owners for it. And, and, and we've said don't make schools victim disarmament zones. We've said get people off these Prozac type drugs that 20% of the country's on roughly. 
Uh, don't have the federal government demand that foster kids be put on psychotropics, 67% of them. I, I mean, they know the vaccines are killing people. It's on the inserts they can kill you. And they get on the news and go, there are no side effects. That's a conspiracy theory. I've shown you news clips. I've shown you news articles. These people do not care about you. And he represents Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan. We've got to start a protest of those guys, start pulling money out of them. I, I guess that's the answer is just go after the banks. The foreign banks. I mean, I guess that's it. He's just their agent. And they've taken the country over by fraud, and now they don't want us armed to ever be able to get our country back because they're planning real tyranny. They want those guns so bad because they're in a race before everything collapses. Because if it all collapses, they'll use it to be able to take over and get control. But if we have guns and fight off the roving hordes of welfare people burning things, that won't play into their hands, will it? So they've got to get guns demonized so they can have cover to wage their homeland security war on gun owners, and that's the plan. The NSA, the whole homeland security system, and, and giant anti-gun checkpoints, and that's what, these, that's what these federally funded, quote, gang checkpoints are all over the country. Texas is heading it up. Totally unconstitutional. But see, Texas thinks conservative means police state. No, it, it means the opposite. So they're like, well, yeah, we have crimes. So we're going to have checkpoints to look for gang members. No, it's just to search our cars. You know where the gang members are. I can take it to them right now selling crack cocaine five miles from here. Let's go to a few more clips than your calls. Uh, let's just say I can't just be the usual suspects. Uh, let's play uh, that clip. Here it is. That's 18. Uh, we are responsible for each other. It's okay. Go ahead and play that one. It's it's all right, guys. I know we got a bunch of we clips here. We are responsible here. for each other. Okay. Uh, you want to play eighteen twelve now, or uh, got a whole bunch of clips there in our primitive, in our in our in our primitive computers. Well, it just says eighteen twelve. I can't just pass the usual suspects. Well, we've got them highlighted right here. I was just going off the ones I highlighted. It doesn't matter. Hey, that's great. Which one can we go to next? Okay, well, let's just go ahead and play the next clip. Yeah, let's go ahead and play it. As soon as I'm finished speaking here, I will sit at that desk and I will sign a directive giving law enforcement, schools, mental health professionals, and the public health community some of the tools they need to help reduce gun violence. We will make it easier to keep guns out of the hands of criminals by strengthening the background check system. We will help schools hire more resource officers if they want them, and develop emergency preparedness plans. We will make sure mental health professionals know their options for reporting threats of violence, even as we acknowledge that someone with a mental illness is far more likely to be a victim of violent crime than the perpetrator. All right, let's stop right there. Their main mission is to say everybody's mentally ill or get you on welfare or get you in the criminal justice system to say now you don't have your rights and make you a slave of the state. This is just modern forms of slavery. They know exactly what they're doing, and they exempt themselves from all their garbage. They've got get-out-of-jail-free cards, literally. Congress gets caught insider trading. They go, guess what? We'll pass a law to make it illegal. It was already illegal. Then the law they pass legalizes them insider trading if the House or Senate Ethics Committee run by some of the worst offenders. It's like, well, if the other fox says that I'm allowed to go eat the hens, it's okay. It'd be like Stalin saying, well, if the Politburo says I can kill 10 million Ukrainians, I can. That makes it legal. Or it'd be like, uh, you know, Heinrich Himmler saying, well, we can kill all these people in death camps if Hitler says it's okay. Uh, Mr. Hitler, of uh, uh, der Fuhrer, uh, can, can you sign this order to make it all legal? Uh, Mr. President, can you sign this order for drone attacks to legally bomb countries and kill innocent people? Uh, oh, you, you signed the order? Oh, you, you didn't have authority? You say NATO gave it to you, not Congress. Oh, okay. I, okay, th they're our boss now. One more clip. One more clip. This is really creepy collectivism. You know, you heard, you know, we have rights to be safe in our schools. We have rights to be safe in our churches. We have rights to be safe, you know, in Chicago, where we've taken all the guns, so the mafia runs things. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. See, it's this collectivism where you as a group of gun owners, you are responsible for the dead kids. And he's had his pundits come out and say that. I mean, that makes me mad. They're, they're trying to guilt me into giving up my rights when he's nothing but a low-down criminal. And again, I've listed the articles of impeachment. 
He is a criminal. And I've listed the proof at InfoWars.com. We are responsible for each other. Listen to this weirdness now. This Stasi state they're announcing where everybody's spying and tattling and it's collective. We're all in socialist health care now, so you're not allowed to eat that steak because I got to pay for your health care. You're not allowed to drink that Coca-Cola or that beer now because I say it's bad for you. And, 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 and it's a nanny state. And we're the collective. And we're going we're gonna to get the gun manufacturers and NRA here, not, not the Second Amendment, but stakeholders to decide if we're going to ban the guns. All this U.N. talk. Let's go to that clip. We are responsible for each other. Again, we are responsible for each other, and it ties into all the rest of the garbage. We're going to be playing more of these clips uh, tonight on the transmission. Let's just go to more calls here. Antoine in Florida, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, buddy. Wow, I'm just waiting. I want to get a couple points across. Just you know, I think we need to get on offensive. You know, like I think I was uh, talking to a couple friends. I think we should march on uh, D.C. with fake guns because I don't want them to put a real person with a gun and say that we shoot people just to symbolize the guns that we have. You know, and um, we should also. I also think you should do a special report because your special reports are very effective. I was able to wake up a lot of people through your special reports. If you could somehow, I know you're very busy. To make a really good special report showing everything that you talked about, how we got here. That'd be really great. I mean, Facebook, the social media, I've woken up a lot of people. Just like you woke up that lady, the Obama phone lady, right there on the air in front of us all. I've done that to a lot. I'm African-American myself. And personally, every African-American that I know that's under 30 knows that he's a crook. Now, the ones that are above 30 think he's God. Well, that's what I've noticed because I do get obsessed reading YouTube comments and I go to the channels and look, and it's it, it, like most of the comments, not just on my YouTube channel, but others are like, this is a crook. We warned you. He's coming. It's black people criticizing him. But then the media says 95% of blacks support Obama. I don't think that's true. And I don't think these polls we hear that only 15% don't want to turn their guns in. I mean, that's not what I'm seeing or hearing. I don't believe these polls. And I, trust me, I'm in the black community. I mean, I my grandmother cried because I wouldn't vote for Obama. That's how bad it is. <laughs> okay, I was playing it to her all, and it was like, it was really weird. Like, they were contradicting themselves while I'm laying out the hardcore facts in their face. You know, yeah, you know I've talked to I, folks who told their parents, you know, he's coming for the guns, and they, and they didn't agree. But now that he's coming for them, they're like, well, you're right. But see, it's kind of too late. But, I mean, he, look, he said he wouldn't raise taxes on working class folks. I mean, they're raising taxes on the poorest people in America that are the working poor. That's pretty cold-blooded, isn't it, when you claim you're this big communist that wants to help everybody? That's true. And another thing I noticed, too, as I'm an African-American, and you get a your car, he'll tell you the same thing. The more educated black people have a hard time believing it because they've been in high college and stuff. Well, that's so the same way. Look, 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 these educated idiot yuppies, I don't care what color they are, are dumb. They won't listen to facts because they're too busy laughing at you because they're so smart. Oh, I know. It's a joke. I appreciate your call, my friend. Uh, let's talk to Joseph in Texas. Thanks for holding her on the air. Hey, Alex. I've been listening to you for a while. The question is, does everybody realize that history is repeating itself? A lot of people do. That's why I'm freaking out. We are repeating history. We're in trouble. This is only to, you need to actually, the one thing that you need to realize is he's going to present four arguments. The four arguments are going to run along the political, which they're already doing, the social with the children that he parades out. You watch. The next thing he's going to come out with, and they're going to cherry pick the data, is going to be medical and economic. No, he's already doing that. He's going to turn Obamacare into a funding mechanism for gun grabbing because Obamacare is written to where he can do anything he wants. Yep, but history is repeating itself, and it seems whenever there's a new bad thing, to, right now guns are the new smoking, they're bad, according to the government. Um, they break out these four arguments, and the only way to fight them is basically say, you know, quit cherry-picking the data. Let me see the entire report. Well, it's more than that. I got a right to defend myself. I don't care what you say. You're not getting my gun because I'm not guilty for what somebody else did. That, and do they honestly think, do the people in New York, these legislators in New York who passed all these gun control laws, do they honestly think criminals are so stupid that they're going to be stuck 
in getting guns from the street. No, they're going to go across state lines. The criminals are going to rejoice. I mean, they, yeah. the criminals are on the run right now because they're getting their butt shot off by the police and the citizens. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Info Wars Nightly News tonight, 7 o'clock Central. You can get 11 memberships for the price of one. You just go create the um, username, passcode, then share it with people. And that's how we get the word out more. Yeah, no more Mr. Nice Guy. The globalists are dropping the hammer because they're behind schedule and they've got to kill our gun culture. It's very positive that they're being this nasty, and, and it really shows we're hurting them. And so they're going to try to get their legislation through without ever really admitting, just, here's a little kid. I don't want your guns. Well, the bill says it. Here's a little kid. Hey, you're, you know, your Obamacare has death panels. No, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, it's right here in subsection. Shut up, racist. I remember actually watching Chris Matthews call people racist, and, they're all, and, they, and they'd be like, huh? Ah, CR, you're, you're racist. You're racist. How does not wanting death panels mean I'm racist? Well, I mean, of course, a racist wouldn't say they were a racist. I mean, it, it's, look, little kids, turn in your guns. Oh, the little kids want them turned in. Don't worry, Jimmy, I'll get the guns. I, I mean, it's so transparent. Obama takes our tax money and wages war against us and gives it to foreign banks. And then I try to sell T-shirts like the new come and take it one to fund my media operation. And yeah, there's evil pro-gun people that make money. And him and Biden are like, mm, that's really terrible. Mm, yeah, we didn't make it out of insider trading like you and Diane Feinstein. Yeah, Biden. Oh, gosh, he's incredible. Jim in California, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, uh, mega dittos, Alex. Hey, if you're not mad at me before the end of this, uh, ask me about the Paris Morgan thing. I have some constructive criticism. But the reason I called, I, I think regarding the Second Amendment, we could clear up all the confusion of terms, intent, and reason if everybody would just go get a copy of Unintended Consequences and read it cover to cover. Yeah, it's an excellent fact, book. It's an excellent book. And I think later I'm going to mail my copy to Barry Hussein, uh, highlighted. Might get me killed, but it might be worth it. But this whole discussion about you know, 1776, and we're all going to go, you know, have a gun battle in the street and stuff. Before we get to that point, it seems to me that it would be smart by uh, trying this, you know, the, the intelligent approach first. But if everybody that went out and bought guns and bought ammo and had background checks and did all that stuff would just stop paying their taxes, most of these problems would go away. Hey, brother, let's get something straight. I'm trying to stop the Civil War. Believe me, I'm going to be the first person killed or locked up. I don't want this. Okay, I'm saying they want to get it started while having kids around them. When we just want to be reasonable, I'm telling you we're in danger. What's your constructive criticism? My, well, uh, okay, I'll skip the rest of the point. But constructive criticism on Piers Morgan, you were great. I love you. You're preaching to the choir. But I'm not the guy when you go on Piers Morgan you should be talking to. You should be talking to my mom and dad, my neighbors, and whoever. Like, I tried to share with other people, and they, they couldn't get past the, the tone and the indignation, which I totally get is totally justified. But I think you need to put on a little bit of a dog and pony show to get a few more people over on your side. Like, you've already won me over. I'm already listening. I'm already calling your show. I'm not, I'm not the target audience when you go on Pierce Morgan. It's the little old lady who sits and drinks the Kool-Aid all day that you need to be uh, kind of that. I agree with you to a certain point, but I found if you slap them upside the head, down the road, they wake up. It's like a delayed action. And I didn't even do that on purpose. I just got mad at the sniveling lying. Uh, you know, Christ overturned the tables and beat the money changers. Paul Revere wrote around saying, get your weapons and shoot people. I'm not doing any of that. I didn't overturn the table. I'm not saying shoot people. I'm saying, look, look, you want my guns, you little tyrant. Okay? And I'm sick of you, and I'm sick of your propaganda. All right? Now, if you'd like to learn more, we'll be covering all this tonight, 7 o'clock Central. We take you now to Clandathra, where our forces are winning an incredible battle against the Obamanoids. Alex Jones signing off. That's a Starship Troopers um, plug there. It's, I'm not going crazy before the New York Times talks about Clandathra.